All right. Powerful. So as we wait, who can tell us something wonderful? <laughs> Sister Kathy. will tell us something wonderful. Mm -hmm. Catherine. I'm actually doing overtime. So I'm like here and I'm working at the same time. <laughs> overtime? Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Yes. Still working from home? I think we'll be working from home for this year, I think. Mm. Must be must be a good feeling then. I don't even I don't normally do overtime, but you know. I think they need to seek the Lord more, yeah. Yeah, and um making time because I think time can really go when you don't plan like something that you'd like to do oh for goodness sake what's going on <laughs> sorry <laughs> making time <laughs> yes um, what has the lord been teaching you yeah, like the teachings we've been having with the men of God and um, mm -hmm. the issue of submitting, of being obedient. Yes. Being ready to face the persecution mm -hmm. and rejection. Yes. Um, Being able to face persecution and obedience. And you know, when, mm -hmm. when you're really pursuing the Lord, you will get all this, you know. Mm -hmm. You will go through persecution and rejection and you have to stand and not um, yield to it. Yeah. Or <clears throat> what is the word? You know, when uh, when you feel like it's your close friends or your family, you know, the, the issue of family and mm -hmm. um, the way the Lord was really emphasizing on hating your father, your mother, your brother, yes. your sister. Your ch so I think sometimes when we go through this rejection, it can take a huge toll and you have to learn how to, to lean on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because it's not easy, you know, but it must be done. Definitely. For the sake of Christ. You just say, okay, so you don't mind? Okay, fine. <laughs> One of the most painful things to be yeah. rejected by family members, to be abandoned by family members. And it's very difficult to indeed. Um... I actually experienced that in 2019, you know. Where my family on my dad's side would not understand my stand. Yes. And I was like, I'm not backing down. <laughs> That's the spirit. It's either you you are you allow me to continue or you just I will let go. Yeah. I will let go. I like to say you you have to make your heart so hard, your heart so hard against the enemy. <laughs> yeah. But it's easy to kind of um, yield to the pressure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just agree to what they're saying. But you're like, no, 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 no. This is my stand. And um, it's not going to change. Definitely. The, the difficult, the, the, the challenging part is making your voice heard. Yeah. Mm. Because sometimes they don't want to listen. They don't want to listen to you, especially when you are young. They think ah, I's just a small child. We'll just talk her out of her decision. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just overwhelm her with, with respect. You must respect your elders. You must listen to your elders. And all you know, those buzzwords. And then there's one. 
like one of my uncles gave me an ultimatum and it was like oh if you you're going to have if you're going to be like that then don't come next time i was like wow hey. <laughs> and then the next time i was like hey i never thought you could get to this point all of you did like <laughs> and um but it was only one of them not the whole you know the whole family you know what i mean mm-hmm. but at that time you know you have to be strong and you're like i'm not going to back down on what i believe and what i stand for definitely i <clears throat> i had my own share with my back it was a dedication the wind I had my <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah, but it helps you grow stronger even though it can be pain for that moment. Um you just get courage to be strong. Yes, the wonderful thing about persecution is the the more the going gets tough, it 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 develops your character. It strengthens yeah. you. It makes you resilient. I for one when when I face uh, opposition it makes me even more resolute mm. to press on and yeah. hold on to what uh, I believe to what uh, true to, to the truth that I hold to and it makes me is the word indignant angry in my spirit how can you oppose me like this things like that yeah and uh, and even challenge the situation to to prove the enemy wrong that no this is the right way and not that so we do need to learn to embrace persecution you know when you look at the the disciples the way they were so willing mm. they were willing they said it is good to to be persecuted and be rejected because then that means i'm following the lord and that mm-hmm. means i'm i'm I'm, I'm sharing in his suffering. Yeah. They considered it a privilege. Oh Lord, who am I to be con- you know? Because if you go through life and you don't experience any of it, then you have blended, you know? Yeah. If yeah. everybody is just okay with you, um if everybody is like, "Oh, you're so cool." <laughs> you're a compromising Christian. Yeah, you I think that's the time you also want to question yourself. Mhm. You're compromised. Well, that's the whole premise of the western world, isn't it? The western world wants to protect everybody from from criticism, from harm, from rejection, from persecution, from any sort of challenge. That's why people are so wimpy. <laughs> In the western world, people are so wimpy, you cannot even criticize one small thing they will take you to the police oh yeah they will report you to the police in fact now they are reporting people for making them feel like something <laughs> you know i feel like you are, you hate me so i'm going to report you to the police <laughs> i feel like But you are please. racist so i'm going to report you and yet they cannot they cannot handle any sort of rejection they cannot handle any sort of um, persecution or the thought of not being wanted terrible yeah but you see i find it sometimes okay it's good to voice your concern because i think like i've been hearing the things like for example in kenya um when you actually go to the police and state something a grieve, grievance that has happened or you have been treated indifferent and it almost in a threatening matter threatening way mm-hmm. and they don't even take it serious mm-hmm. you know so i kind of like the way the western world approaches a particular scenario like the will investigate you know before persecution and etc cetera, etc cetera. but in terms of africa they they take some things as not not important 
<clears throat> yeah, it's oh yes, it's just that oh, the, the Westerners they take it overboard. Right. <laughs> they overdo it. Yeah, but I I find it's better to to what's it called to research and find out whether the person was right or wrong, mm -hmm. rather than to disregard it. Okay, to say I feel I think that's overstated, you know, mm -hmm. overrated. I mean, um, to say I felt like they didn't like me or <laughs> that that's that's the result now. That's where that's the stage where things are now. I feel like you are, especially the, those buzzwords, hate speech. If you just speak against, if you try to rebuke sin, they say it's hate, hate speech. Mm. <laughs> they call oh, it yeah. hate speech now. And, and the police will arrest you for hate speech. Lord have mercy. But we have to be able to stomach um, the, the rejection and realize that Christ is the only one that can truly protect us, save us, and be our comfort, and not mankind. All right, welcome, Pastor Silas. We're just sharing about things that we have learned recently. Welcome, everybody that has joined. Um, Sister Wendy Aluda, Spain, was gay from Saudi Arabia. Welcome, welcome. We're just sharing what the Lord has been teaching you recently. All right. Only sister, only Pastor Catherine has spoken up. I don't know if everybody else is shy to speak, to share what the Lord has been teaching you. Is there anybody else who wants to share what the Lord has been teaching you of late? I guess the silence means no. Nine. Then we shall begin. Okay, let's begin with properties and marriage. Okay, so. We have enough people. We have 10 people so far. Do you anything? Oh, great. Okay. And if we're two, just go ahead. Huh? <laughs> properties and marriage. Okay, so. So what, what do we mean by properties and marriage? The person who suggested this topic is not even here. Shall we skip it then? <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll send him to the video. I will, I will put my video shortly. I know it's not good to be the only one on video. It's not very good. I feel like I'm having almost fellowship with myself <laughs> as well. Very good. Yes, Spain <laughs> was gay. Wonderful. Um, so we are talking about properties and marriage. So the idea is the question was, uh, I don't know what were the questions that he posted here. He didn't actually post any specific question. So now, there's a girl who asked about it also. What's that? What was her name? She's from Namibia. Who's that? I can't remember her name. It was it was Overseer Jacob. No, 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 no. It was a lady. It was over the Jacob. No, I mean, there was another one who asked also about it. Meke? Martha? Justina? No, no. Who else is? Namibia that had, uh... She was saying, is it a problem for, you know, if I have a, um, a property, like if I have a house before mm -hmm. getting married? That was Sister Martha who asked it the other time, but it was answered, I think. Okay, we'll, 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 about the house. Uh huh. We'll contemplate it again today. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's a good question. Sorry. Continue. Um. What What other questions would come up as we handle this topic? What other questions would we like to to handle? Um. As part of as part of a learning process, it's always good to, uh, to approach a topic with questions, yeah, to be able to dig deeper and and um, and consider the different aspects of the topic. Questions are very helpful to 
get deeper to help us get into all the crevices. All right. So, what questions come to your mind when uh, the topic of properties and marriage is presented like this? So, I hope um, you would not want me to change the properties to our names as <laughs> soon. Okay, changing properties. Title. Mm -hmm. Changing should, the title name. How do we say this? Should the, the, should the properties names? Title. Oh, wait. Title. It's usually called title deeds. So the title deeds, should the title deeds be changed to our names? Mm -hmm. Be changed to both. Mm -hmm. Great. To both our names. All right. What other question? Mm, who should have properties before? <clears throat> is it the problem to have properties? Okay. So this is both for uh, if I have both as a as a man and as a woman. Yeah. Well, I think you anyway. Those are the questions. Let me not go into the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Hold that. Hold it. Hold the answers. <laughs> Let us deal with the questions now. Mm. Let us come up with questions. What about debt? Should um, since oh, we should also definitely policy, yeah? discuss debt before marriage. Hey, <laughs> what did you say, Sister uh, Pastor Kathy? You should definitely consider debt. Do you yes. have any debt? That is a big one. What about debt? Very huge one. Mm. Mm-hmm, very good one. Um, should, should we pay the debts before? Should I endeavor to, is it a must to pay my debts before marriage? How about that? If you can try. <laughs> you can try, you know. All right. Anybody else who has a question that comes to mind as we as we uh, consider this topic, Pastor Silas? Any question that is in your mind, Sister Meke? Sister Ann, eh? Sister Mbugwa, Naomi Payne. Is there any question that comes to mind? Oh, oh there's a question here. Is it okay to get married without any source of income? Okay, we have discussed this before, but oh, we did, yeah. We can handle it again. Is it okay to get married without any source of <clears throat> income? Great. That's a good question. What other questions should we consider? You see, it is Are we always just focusing on properties um, and marriage? Because, you know, when we talk about marriage, there's so many facets within it. You uh -huh. know what I mean? So maybe uh -huh. we should just say properties in marriage, you know, because uh -huh. when we say and marriage, because now marriage has so many things. <laughs> All right. Well, it's we, as, because, because we, are, we are single people here. Mm. Uh, so we have both the premarital stage and then we are thinking about the future mm. aspect, yeah, uh, which is um, thinking about the, the, the future life as a married person uh, and trying to understand, yes, properties, whether, um, what, what are those challenges that one could face if you have properties now and you want to get married or how, to, how do you go about that? I think Properties and marriage, I think it suffices. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's or maybe see. you could say properties before marriage. <laughs> before and after, okay, let's say this. Great. Because after we should really be one, so we shouldn't be having my own, my, you know. Definitely. But you remember there was the other time, this other brother, that was brother um, um, Joy from South Africa. He asked mm. about prenuptial agreement. Yeah. You know, in Hollywood, they have this idea of uh, not just <laughs> Hollywood, all over the world, really. If you are marrying somebody who's rich, the first thing they try to protect <laughs> some of them. Money. 
is their money and their properties and their businesses. Yeah. So they see you as a sort of intruder. So when they are getting married, they are already thinking about divorce. <laughs> <laughs> see how, how sin has ruined for us. Yeah? When yeah. they are getting married, they are already thinking about divorce. And therefore, the first thing is, how can I protect my properties that I came to this marriage with? Or I think they think um, they try to see whether you really love them for them or you love them for the money. I think that's true. That is part of the, of the, of the, of the issue. Who's making those noises? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's, Maybe they should mute noise. their mic. Mm -hmm. So. Oh. Sorry. Can you hear like when I'm yeah, it's Wendy. Wendy's, Wendy Aluda's uh, mic is on. When I'm typing, is it very loud? No, I cannot hear how you, you're typing. Okay. okay, okay. All right. <clears throat> so Sister Meke is talking, is, uh, has, a, has a question here on budgeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Very important. How do couples do their budgeting? Is it negotiable? Now this is this married couples, yeah? Yes. Good. The best way to learn is to ask questions. That's why we are, we are handling questions now. We are looking at possible questions to answer. Are properties supposed to be under a mail? <clears throat> right. Ah. Uh, Properties supposed. You mean in marriage, yeah? I think it can be under both the people. But obviously you'd have to pay a bit more to change the name. Hmm. All right, that's a very good question. You know, of course, in uh, some communities, women are not allowed to... Uh, that's I think old century. We're in the new one. <laughs> but I, I was shocked. Eh? Mm. Some Westerners um, are fascinated at the lifestyle of um, uh, these traditional cultures like Maasai. Mm. And they sort of want to emulate that. They sort of trying to make it a normal uh, as if promoting it for everybody to accept it as a plausible way of life for everybody like how the way the men can have multiple women or what? yes the way a man can have multiple women and they can continue dreaming no woman will share <laughs> well definitely Definitely. I think then it was kind of enforced on you that you didn't really have a choice. But then they, they are trying to, to make it as a, as a normal thing that different people have different ways of doing things. So that can be acceptable too. So, so, so it's a good question indeed. It's for the good... woman who mm -hmm. is stupid will allow that to happen. I was, there was a video produced by a lady from Europe is trying sort of to promote that sort of lifestyle. Really? Polygamy. Mm -hmm. I think she has been brainwashed to think it's going to work. You know, the Western world has successfully dethroned Jesus from their constitutions. And yeah. because they have removed Jesus from their, from their cultures, now they are trying to replace that with other things. They have really lost the sense of meaning. Yeah. The, the true sense of the word. So they are using, they are bringing now all these other things, all these other worldly things to try and fill that void that was occupied by Christianity previously. As somebody said, uh, uh, when you look at the Christian, I mean, at the, at the European nations, most of them are Christian nations. They were founded on Christian principles. They, um, they, have, been to the, uh, they have been Christian nations because the Bible, the Christianity has been their way of life. Most of the things that they do have are dictated by the scriptures. But now they have come up with laws to deal 
to criminalize Christianity, yeah? mm. to make it unconstitutional, to make it a crime to talk about Jesus. To, to, everybody. To, everybody is now questioning Christianity. Is it the only way of life? Mm. So maybe, maybe you can also be, who knows, a cannibal. Maybe cannibalism is also good. <laughs> maybe, maybe getting married to different people is also a good thing. Hey, who knows? They say whatever makes you happy, do it. That's it. So they don't want any moral standard. They don't want to be confined to a set of rules that were written 2,000 years ago, they say. <laughs> hmm. All right. Um, I think we should discuss oneness, especially in marriage, to help us to understand. All right. Oneness in marriage? Yeah. Okay, good. I think we have enough questions to... That's a lot. <laughs> uh, to gra grapple with. Maybe one, some of them, there can be quick answers. <laughs> yes. Let, let, let's talk about uh, the, the difference between the culture today and the culture, say, in the days of Jesus or prior to that. You know, the, the civilization has, changed, has been changing, right? but the Bible has not changed. Isn't it? Mm. The Bible has not changed, but civilization has been changing. Different ways of thinking. Uh, ways of thinking have changed over the centuries. Yeah. Uh, there was a time, and not, not just different ways of thinking and cultures, but also vocations, jobs. Uh, since the, the, the feminist, um, feminist movement, and, uh, equality, the movement for that wants women to be equal to men. Uh, and now it's trying to push women. The men used to be the breadwinner, now no longer yes. the case. It's no longer the case. Uh, <clears throat> women have- The standard some, of living has changed. The men have been abusing their women and as a result, some women started fighting back and it turned into this war, the war of the genders. Mm -hmm. Men fighting women over the centuries. Women not only wanting to be heard now they turn to they want to dominate yeah and uh and shame well that's literally what they're doing now they're shaming men for being men uh, they say a whole issue <laughs> of identity culture uh, identity crisis our mm. generation is undergoing an identity crisis because they have rejected the lord so women want to overpower men they want men to be shamed they, they, they have buzzwords, masculinity, toxic masculinity, that if you are a man, you are toxic. It's a toxic thing to be a man. Such, <laughs> of course, all these okay, things. Okay, not all speak. women, but you know. No, not all women, but those ones that have the big microphone, the ones on radio and TV. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, <clears throat> but when you look at the days of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, indeed, the, the there was no industry. The industries that were there are not the industries that we have today. There were no railways. There were no typewriters. There were no computers. There were no airplanes. There were no cars. No cell phones. Wow. <laughs> That's a big change, yeah? They had no uh, life joking. <laughs> people, people were not... Uh, there was employment in the cities and such, but a lot of people were self employed mm. yeah it was not they the thing of you crazy. grow up yes it was not the issue of you are growing up to work as a bank manager with it with the with the with, with the dream to be a bank manager or with the dream to be a truck driver the dream to be a you know some of uh, this a computer programmer working for somebody else they as they were growing up the woman was being trained to be a homemaker. Huh? Yeah. The man was being trained to be a homemaker, how to be a faithful husband, how to build a house and feed your family and protect your family and take care of your family. Now, talking about the culture that the Lord gave the Israelites. Yeah, the Canaanites had their own issues too. Now, we're talking about the biblical culture now here. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the boys were growing up with their fathers, learning 
the trade of their fathers. Yeah. And and family, as we have been learning recently, family was so central. Was so central to their ways of life. But now contrast that to what you see today. Okay, back then, uh, women spent their days at home, taking care of the children, um, taking care of the house. Yeah, and they were good homemakers. Yeah? Some of them also, of course, were well-respected women. Yes, whether you talk about Miriam and others. But now contrast that with what you see today. The family has totally broken down. Uh, divorce back then was frowned upon. It was not just something you take for granted. You, you, you just jump into. I heard uh, most recently that um, it's a couple that got married. I mean, very, very young couple, very young Christian couple, got married. And then in a space of uh, one year and a few months, they got divorced. The man realized that the woman he married, this Christian woman he married, mm. is not the sweet Christian girl he thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the sweet Christian girl he thought he was marrying. But everybody has the ups and downs. Hey, it's not like he's a sweet angel either, I'm yes. sure. But but it is not the man who left the woman. It is the woman who rejected the man. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, he, realized, he, he only came to be shocked that this woman, drinking alcohol, very, very into all this stuff. And, uh, wow. And is this then, in the ministry or just out there? Huh? In the ministry of someone out there? No, no, no. Not in this ministry. Thank God, not in this ministry. Uh, but unfortunately, it's in the church out there. But you see, in the other church, they kind of say it's okay, a social drink, nonsense. That's, that's, that's the problem now. That is the problem, especially now when you, when, when you couple that sort of mindset with the worldly lifestyle of wanting to be recognized by the world. Because the woman is involved in uh, TV and uh, press journalism and and look at this for some reason uh, she also now decided I don't want this man anymore she re she decided she did not want the man anymore and she decided to go for a divorce this is this is an incident that took place in Namibia so so you look at that look at the way uh, the, the pitiful, the tragic way that marriage is being handled today. Mm. The reason for which we are having these fellowships. Uh, yeah. the, the people get into marriage. They have not even spent one year in marriage counseling. They have not mm. even spent time uh, learning about, uh, you know, how to prepare for marriage the right way and all these things. And then they jump in to be shocked to the core, to be shocked, just to be shocked at what this man is really like or what this woman is really like, mm -hmm. and not knowing how to stomach what they see when they get in. Mm -hmm. And so they jump ship. They go in 140, and they also <laughs> come out 140. <laughs> 140 kilometers per hour. Yeah, And so it's a pitiful state when you compare what we have today with what mm, Jacob had back then, or what Abraham had then. Mm. Uh, so <clears throat> there is that big discrepancy. There is that big discrepancy, and it is now up to us, as as uh, as, as as people of the ministry of the Lord, to reclaim back the 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 value of of family. Amen. Mm. To bring back the value of family. To say. The, the, the plan of the Lord, the initial plan of the Lord, when he called Ad, Adam and Eve to be married, it is still possible. Amen? Yeah, amen. And when you look at the conflict, the issues that people are fighting over when they get married, fighting, tug of war, when you listen to all these divorce cases, you find at the heart of that is properties, and the heart of that is children, and the heart of that is money. 
and all these things. And, uh, and as, as, uh, as Brother Joy said the other time, and then there are these issues of prenuptial agreement. But what is the Christian perspective? How, as Christians, are we supposed uh, to handle these things correctly? Is it a problem if I have a property before marriage? Okay, before we answer these questions, uh, overseer, overseer had a question up. Ever at the hand up. Overseer Lucas. Senior Overseer Lucas, you had a hand raised. You still want to talk? Yes, please. Uh, praise the Lord, blessed people. Amen. It is indeed a blessing to have such kind of platforms Amen. where we are being equipped before we enter, you know, <laughs> some I some people have names, you know, people have names for many things. Mm -hmm. So, but we bless the Lord, you know, for such kind of uh, platforms. It's always very powerful Amen. for one to be ready, for one to know exactly what you are entering into mm -hmm. so that you have time, you know, have enough time whether you are ready really because at times we've seen, you know, for a long time people that just jump into it like that without any knowledge. Mm -hmm. without being equipped and without getting proper guidance. So we see that uh, over the time people have, have run away, you know. But what I wanted to say based on the discussion ongoing, mm -hmm. um, I, there is one scripture that in the book of Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes, or so to say, chapter 7, verse 29, uh, yeah. let's see. Chapter 29, he said, Behold, this is the only reason for it that this is now amplified. Mm -hmm. Behold, this is the only reason for it, for it that I have found. God made men upright, but they, men and women, have sought out many devices for evil in brackets. Mm -hmm. So that 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 uh, that scripture, a lot of time, it really, you know, it really keep coming back to me. You know, um, if we look at very well, really, if we look at like even as we are discussing that, if we look at back then during the time of Abraham, then the time of uh, Sarah, we see that uh, things were well. There was no, you know, fifty-fifty story yeah. as it is today. Mm -hmm. There was total submission. Yeah. But then as we are learning more things, as the world is developing and stuff like that, you know, things are changing. Mm -hmm. Things are changing. And, and, and as we learn more, and you, you can see that even marriages today, they are changing, you know, mm -hmm. to really find, you know, to really find a marriage built on the principle of God pure principle of God, a marriage that really 1,000% follows the principles of God as it was done back then. It's very hard nowadays because we are too much knowledgeable and we have learned so much and, you know, there is this thing of uh, police protection or whatever, putting in protection order and stuff like that nowadays in marriages. So, mm -hmm. really that scripture, a lot of time it really, you know, uh, helps me a lot to understand the thing and also to be aware Yes. That this is how God created us and everything was just perfect and well. But nowadays we see that as we are becoming more land, you know, as, 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 as people are also inquiring this and that. So things are really changing in marriages nowadays, but it's very, very, very much important to remain focused on the re original plan of God for marriage and to Indeed. stick to the principles of God on marriage. Indeed. So... What I would say that, uh, especially for the singles now, we shouldn't really, you know, of course, we have been taught very well by the Lord that we should be born again very properly. We should be, be born again properly. You shouldn't be born again on this other side. You are trying to accommodate other things. But when you are born again, you want to stick to the principles of God in the Bible concerning marriages. Amen. So even the example that you see about uh, Eve, when Eve was deceived by the enemy, that if she would eat of that fruit, then she would just be like God, mm. which was a very big lie. 
And after that, you see that they found themselves in a whole big mess. So that is still happening up to today. You might learn something, maybe at your workplace, you are learning something, you know, there is this other couple or this other woman that is married. And, and so she will try to initiate to you some ideas or some things that they do in their marriage and so on. And later on, you might really desire, you might think that, no, it's, it's, it's really good. But you are fully aware that, okay, this is what the Bible says concerning this and this and this. So I believe that we have to be very much careful also on the many things that we are learning. Let us always, you know, stick to the principles of God, stick to the Bible, stick to the word of God for any guidance in marriage. Yeah, that is just what I quickly wanted to share. Amen. Thank you so much, senior overseer Lucas. It is very important that as Christians we adhere to the scriptural, to the biblical principles. Indeed, very, very important. Allow me to recognize uh, Pastor Saki. Uh, Pastor. Welcome. Finally. <laughs> yes, finally, he's here. Ash. Abel. Welcome, Ash. <laughs> And who else joined us? Okay, Wendy, Aluna came back. All right, welcome everybody. Great. Welcome, welcome. So, <clears throat> very, very important. Very, very important topic we are handling here today. Properties before and after marriage. Is it a problem if I have a property before marriage? All right, when we talk about properties, we are talking about houses. Yeah, because this is now what the Bible will call wealth, yeah? So you're talking about houses, you're talking about cars, yeah? Well, household items. <laughs> and I think it's really good if we keep to the topic, otherwise we might end up uh, going over the three hours. You know what I mean? Yes, I agree. Uh -huh, I agree, Pastor, Pastor Jeffrey. Right. So is it a problem to have properties before marriage? No, it is not a problem. It's not a problem to have a house as a single person. It's not a problem to have a car as a single person, household items, not a problem at all. All right? But be ready. If you, as a Christian <coughs> young person, Christian single, are planning for marriage, and you are buying properties, then you must be prepared that when you get married, then whatever you have will become the other person. I know, right? Maybe I should <laughs> stop buying my lands and everything. <laughs> I'm joking. There you go, even land. There we go. Yeah. Uh, no, you can't. You have to invest when you can mm -hmm. because yes. um, money finds its way to go to something else if you don't work on it you know what i mean so yeah and you must be prepared that when you get married so whatever is yours is the other person also yeah and if you are going to go to an extent to try and protect your land from your spouse that is ungodliness <laughs> yeah. or your house if you have bought a house while you are 26 years old as a bank manager or as a lawyer or as a whatever you doctor. are doctor professor yeah. young professor in the lord yeah and you have your big mansion and you are getting married and you are thinking to yourself i don't want to lose this house if we get divorced then you are already setting yourself up for disaster you're entering marriage with that type of mindset, you may, you may, you may as well not be ready for marriage. Yeah. yeah. So you must prepare yourself, heart and soul, that the land that I have, once I get married, it will be ours. The houses will be ours. The cars, it will not, no longer be my car, and it will not be I bought this, but it will be ours. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's so important because I think, especially when you have acquired some property, mm -hmm. if you start thinking about how 
you're going to the exit strategy. Yeah. <laughs> you're basically, like you've said, it's like you're planning for a fail. Yes. In your marriage. Definitely. And that's and what happens to the, to the worldly people that have entered marriage with prenuptial agreements. They actually yeah. end up getting divorced and fighting over their properties. Yeah. And I also think you have to be open on what you have mm -hmm. um, when you go into the marriage. You know, there's like, like, you know, for example, if you have a house, the way you're saying the secret house or. <laughs> yeah. I think you have, you have to be open about what you have acquired before marriage. Mm -hmm. Just be open, like the way you'd like somebody else to be open about their, um, their acquisitions. <laughs> mm, yes, that, that's very true. Um, we have to be honest that in my bank account, I have zero dollars zero cents i'm sorry <laughs> I and i think it's also <laughs> a good idea to have like the way you've said the bank account you should have a joint bank account definitely definitely and you need you need to endeavor to do that yeah just go to the bank and add your spouse to your account so that you two can have the same account you can have yeah. access to the finances if, yeah. you're, if, if you are suspecting that this man you want to marry is <laughs> irresponsible with money <laughs> and you fear that he's going to leave you in debt, then you need, pro then you need help, yeah? Mm. Then you need to seek help, financial help, uh, counseling, yeah? To sort this issue out before you get married. Yeah. Yes. If you find out while you are still, when, when you are already married to the person, then you also must seek help. Seek help. Yeah. One of the big problems is people don't like to seek one. <clears throat> they don't like help. They don't want other people to interfere with their family issues. Yeah? Life. <laughs> but if you don't seek help, if you don't know any better. Mm. Yeah? Really. That's why... And I hope people will be open about their financial status when they're going to marriage. It, they have to be. You have to be very honest with one another. That I have two bank accounts, or I have three bank accounts. I have a saving account in the in Australia. I have another one in uh, Namibia. I have another one in Hong Kong. I have another one in the USA. And this is our collective. <laughs> this is the collective amount of money that I have. The total amount of money I have. Huh? This car here, this house in Ongadiva, I have this house in Dublin, I have this house in Kenya. <laughs> I must trust that person very well to marry them because, hey. <laughs> yes. That's it. That's why marriage is not a joke. You have to make sure that you make the right choice. Otherwise, yeah. you end up marrying the person who destroy whatever you... <laughs> Bankrupt you. Who will lead you into bankruptcy. That's it. I was watching a video yesterday. There's this woman who got married to six men. And hmm. what? Got married to six men. Six? Hey. Father. <laughs> then she married husband number four. When she married uh -huh. husband number four, uh, or is it husband number five? When he, <laughs> traveled, when he traveled on a business trip, she uh -huh. changed the house, the lock of the house. She changed, <laughs> she changed the lock so that when he comes back, he'll not enter the house. Wow. Wickedness, yes. That's why we should not we should make sure that we we invest a lot of time in choosing the right person. So what happened? Did she say why you changed there? The well, for, they have been separate since two thousand. Uh, well, since 1997, I think. Hey. For many years. Yeah, she, she locked him out of his house and then she went to get oh, a loan. Oh, out of his, his house? Name. His own yeah. house? Yeah, he bought the house. <laughs> then they got married. But she was already married to three other men that she has not yet divorced. So he can actually kick her out if he owns the house. But the law was designed to protect women. <laughs> even, even when you cohabitate, you know, somebody can also claim I'm telling you, especially hey. here in Europe, hey. they recognize cohabitation <laughs> as, legal, as legal partnership. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
so 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 that's why we need the, the, the topic that we discussed previously is very important uh, to ensure that you marry the right person so that there will be no fear of is this person going to lock me out of my house you know it's such a, a remote thought that hardly comes to your mind but if you marry the wrong person you'll end up being such now you'd be thinking about carrying all your title deeds <laughs> as you're going <laughs> in your suitcase <laughs> that's a that's a bad life to be living <laughs> all right so we need to be honest with one another very very <laughs> true yes yes and then but it's powerful then don't portray the false image try not to portray a false image to to portray as if you are wealthy when you are really not wealthy to try or to try and keep up with the Jones. You guys know who the Jones are? Marjorie, welcome from uh, Toronto. Amen. Good to have you today joining us. Wonderful. We are talking about properties <clears throat> and marriage. All right. So try not to keep up with the Jones. That's one of the things. Peer pressure. Some people call it peer pressure. Sometimes even people in church can make you feel like uh, you need to pretend. Don't let people at church intimidate you. I have to have the latest Mercedes Benz. Yes, <laughs> like my bishop. Or I need to have a house like my pastor. <clears throat> You're deceiving yourself. So don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't try to keep up with, <clears throat> with other people. You don't know how they got what they have. These things of comparing yourself. Comparing yourself. Oh, Pastor Silas is a Lexus. I must also get a Lexus. Should not do that. Should the property title deeds be changed <clears throat> to both our names? Yes, definitely. They should be changed. Everybody's name should be there. I'm talking about Christian homes now. <clears throat> a friend of mine told me that uh, his sister got married uh, the, the husband bought the house and for some reason they ended up getting a divorce and the husband was kicked out of the house and she ended up keeping the house so we, we see that laws are designed in some countries to protect women but does she have children I don't think she does. If she doesn't have children, then they are, there's no reason for her to keep the house. <laughs> These the laws of men they are passed in your times. Pastor Kepler. <clears throat> for us as Christians, we just want to make sure that we don't end up in such situations. We need to work extra hard. We need to invest extra put extra effort into ensuring that when you say yes on that altar, it will be until the Messiah comes. Yeah. To death do us part. Yes. People take that for granted. <laughs> Definitely. And there's a lot of work that goes into it. Amen. Let us not approach marriage casually <clears throat> and with familiarity. <clears throat> mm -hmm. so, but the title deeds should be changed to both your names. Definitely. Wait, do you have to do that as soon as you get married? That's costly, man. <laughs> well, uh, we have to be practical. We have to be realistic. Yeah? Mm. Uh, the decisions that are going to be made cannot just be done rashly. Mm. Yeah, it's like, so, so of course, if it's going to be costly and, and, and you have to work out a pathway. How are we going to get, what is the easiest way be able to do this and of course with, with, with professional help also whether it's from a, a agent or your lawyer usually you cannot buy a house these days without having a lawyer to process your funds yeah. Man, they take so, a lot of money <laughs> if you are buying through an agent of course you have to to, to involve a lawyer so that you do not end up um, so that the government does not end up investigating you with money laundering and things like that. 
<laughs> Especially if you are not using a bank. Hey. If you're not buying with a loan, with a mortgage. Especially if you're not buying with a mortgage. You I'm actually saying. have to prove your source of income before you can purchase. Yeah, in Europe, yes. Oh. <laughs> in Namibia, you just need a... Um, What's that? Tax, your tax, your tax uh, number. Oh, I can say that's the same with Kenya. Mm -hmm. That's very true, Sister Meke. These are very temporary things and uh, there should be no fighting. We are talking about one message marriage, yes. And we are also talking about the practical practicality thereof. You uh, kind of sound far away sometimes when you move back. Is it? I should increase the volume on my mic. Yeah, right. please. Okay, I have. Good. So, yes, work out a good pathway to see how you can uh, get your title deeds changed to both names. This, this really helps with respect to um, both parties being uh, secure, feeling uh, you don't want to be the, the one who has bought the house or the one who have come into the marriage and then your, your husband is refusing to allow you to have ownership of the house. <laughs> or your wife. Imagine the roles were reversed. You're the woman who had the house previously, before the wedding. And then you got married. You're moving together. And now you're having a discussion at home about changing your title deeds to both of you. And your wife is refusing. Or your husband is refusing. You almost feel left out, isn't it? Like, what is he hiding from me? Why doesn't he want me to, um, to have my name on the documents? So it's a very, very important thing, I think. What about debts? Is it a must to pay our debts before marriage? If you have student debts before marriage and you have a job and you can start paying off your debts, please do. Or whatever you can do to get to pay off your debt, please do. If it so happened that you get married without before you can pay off your debts, then that becomes family debt. Then husband and wife must own that debt together. And this is where now you need to be careful also, because sometimes there are people who are financially unstable, they're in debt, they just want somebody to marry so that they can pay off their debts. So be careful of that, that you don't end up in such a trap. But I wonder how somebody can be so comfortable about somebody else paying their own debt. <laughs> you should take responsibility. Fain, <laughs> 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 uh, Fain wants to say something. Fain cause gay. Okay. Yes, yes, Bishop, I'm asking, there about debt, what about uh, you have been in marriage together and you end up uh, uh, divorcing, what if you had debt, you, what, what, what are you supposed to do about it, <laughs> are you supposed to pay those debts or how, how? Now, uh, let's, it's a hypothetical question, yeah, now. Uh, we don't want anybody to get divorced here, right? Now, if 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 you, if there is a divorced couple out there, who when the who was left with debts by the spouse who has divorced them, you have to pay off. You have to pay your debts definitely. You have to pay your debts. Uh, of course, situations are very very critical. Are very complex at times. Sometimes, if you had bought a house. Now talking about divorce. Now we are not we are not we are not promoting divorce here. Please, we already made that clear. Maybe we discuss divorce much later because that's not our focus. You know. Yes, it's not our focus. But I'm just saying that in case uh, a, a woman is left by her husband, or her husband is left by her by her wife, by her, her husband is left by his wife, and uh, when the wife left or the husband left, you are left with all these debts. You have to find a way to pay. I think in Europe or in the USA, if you don't, then you can file for bankruptcy, something like that. Hey, you'll pay. I'm not applying for bankruptcy. I'll <laughs> never find a job again. 
So there are such things. So I'm not a I'm not a financial expert in that area, but I know they do such things. But yes, paying debt, you have to pay debt. You have to find a way to pay a debt. Whether you get two jobs, three jobs, four jobs, five jobs. To pay but I think debt. you can actually uphold them to accountability. So if they left and the loan was on both of you, yeah, you can take them to court to have them to pay also. There is a legal way to, to go about it. Yeah. But of course, I'm not an expert in those things. Uh, all I know is that I don't want any one of us to find ourselves in such situations. Eh? God forbid. Amen. <laughs> um, yes. So we must pay our debts. When you own your debt, whether it's student loan debt or car loan before marriage now. But what, what, let me say this about debt. Try your best to stay out of debt. Yeah. Yeah. Try your level best. If you want to buy a car and you don't have money, save up if you have a job. Try your best to save up <clears throat> if you have a job. If um, somebody else is promising to buy you a car, praise God for that. <laughs> Amen. Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> but don't get into debt to try and oh, impress so me. If mm. you want to get in to buy a, a bed on loan, I'll say just save up for your bed. Yeah? What type of bed is that? King size bed or extra large bed? <laughs> Luxury. <laughs> it's made out of gold. <laughs> <laughs> no, let the extra large bed wait, please. Yeah? Why get into debt for 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 a bed for a, for a bed? You can yeah. even wait if you don't have a fridge and you want to get into debt for a fridge, why ruin your life for nothing? Just save up and buy a fridge after five months, 10 months or so. Um, try to be realistic. Don't try to keep up with a lifestyle that you cannot afford. I remember when I got my first job, I had to buy a bed, I had to buy a wardrobe, I had to buy a, a stove, and I was renting and I was not getting so much money and I needed new socks because my socks at that time had holes in them. <laughs> so I went to the Chinese shop and I bought these um, Chinese makeshift wardrobes, these, these ones that, that you can easily erect and then, but then they don't hold so fast. You should have what? gone to Ikea. In Namibia, where is Ikea in Namibia? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> no, we don't have IK in Namibia. So you have to live within your means. I went to Chinese to the Chinese shop and bought that, that, that wardrobe, the cloth, the one made out of cloth, the one where when you put in your cloth, then it begins to go one side like this. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we had to buy a small stove to allow us to, to do our cooking. And then we bought also a thin mattress like this to be sleeping on. I was sleeping on a thin mattress for about six months. I refused to get into debt because why get into debt over a bed? And you know, when you get into debt, eh, maybe that will be, you'll be in slavery for, for about one, one whole year. And the amount of money that you end up paying for that, debt would be three times more than what you could you could have paid in cash yeah so i would advise everybody or every every one of us try your best to get that as much as you can so that when you get married then you will not get into marriage with unnecessary debt hallelujah amen yeah just try your best. If you don't have socks and you, are, and you are tempted to use credit card to buy socks and clothes that you cannot afford, just cut up the credit card and wait for end of the month until you get your 10 pounds to go and buy your socks. Yes, Meke. Yes, Senior Bishop, I have a question. Yes. I want to ask, is it a sin to have debts? Is it sin to have debts? 
for instance, you have a house on debt, you have a car on debt, and for instance, you die with, uh, <laughs> with those debts, is it a sin or not? Want to hear, please. Okay. What do you guys think? Is it a sin or not? Let me hear from the rest. Ash, Pastor Kathy, Justina. Uh, one second. Marjorie, Martha, Naomi, Payne, Saki, Senior Overseer, Jacob, Senior Overseer, uh, Susan, Pastor Silas, Wendy, what do you think? Is it a sin to have debt? Is it a sin to be in debt? Praise the Lord, the blessed yes. senior bishop. Amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Habil. Thank you indeed. Uh, thank you, Sister Meke, for having asked that question. Uh, it has really disturbed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the other day we had a very long conversation in one of our groups here mm -hmm. as far as debts are concerned. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you are to take uh, a, a loan, mm -hmm. there are some or rather there is an agreement you are to enter into with the person giving you the loan for example you want some loan from the bank but then there are some policies the bank has laid down to help them in uh, 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 reclaiming their their money mm -hmm. so if someone goes to the bank and signs the, the, the agreement yes. and takes the loan and uses it, but fails to return the money in the stipulated time, the, in the time they agreed that uh, they will be able to return the money, yeah. then you have flouted the rules, so you've not done as you had taken an oath. Mm -hmm. So meaning you've gone even against the Bible. I guess Sister Catherine is looking for that, but for that but because I heard she was trying to talk, but she went uh, uh, in the background. It, I think it is in Matthew or something that says, uh, it talks about debts. So when you take a loan, but you don't pay, in that you don't pay back in the stipulated time you and the bank or in the uh, the ones giving out the loan then you have flouted and gone against what the bible says and that is sin as far as i am concerned sin a bishop okay so thank you so much brother habil so brother habil says if you do not pay your debt it's a sin now, are you saying, so you're saying that to, to be in debt is not a sin, but to have, to not pay your debt is a sin, right? Oh, yes. Okay. And then, uh, okay, and then uh, Sister Susan is asking on top of that, what if you are still paying for your debt and then you die, All right? Sister Marjorie, <laughs> what is your take? Yeah, thank you, Blessed Bishop. Uh, I'm not sure what happened then. I cannot hear you. Huh? You can't hear me? Okay, now it's better. Okay. So thank you. Uh, for me, I think having a debt is not a sin, right? Mm -hmm. But I think, um, like the previous pastor said, you need to honor the agreement you made with the, with the person who gave you the money. Mm -hmm. um, in the Bible, in Psalms 37, mm -hmm. verse 21, it says the wicked borrows and does, and does not repay, mm -hmm. right? If you borrow and you don't pay back what you promised, mm -hmm. um, I think that's what is a sin. But I think if you die and the Lord sees that you try to honor your agreement, mm -hmm. let's say, for example, you, um, you borrowed $10,000, but you are faithful to the person who gave you the money, you have been able to pay what you promised to pay. Let's say you promised that every month I'll give you 500. Mm -hmm. And you have been faithful for some months. 
and unfortunately you die, but you have been faithful in that agreement, I don't think you can go to hell for it okay. because you honored your agreement. Um, let's say you borrow again and you promised the person who gave you the money that I'll be able to give, let's say $200, but because of circumstances you fail, you cannot afford it anymore. Instead of hiding from the person who gave you the money or waiting for him to come and you know demand for what you promised, if you go and make peace, right? Mm -hmm. And say that, I know this was a agreement, but because of this and this, I'm not able to pay, but give me time. Mm -hmm. I'm still faithful to our agreement, I will pay. Mm -hmm. I think the Lord follows peace. If you have an agreement and the person who gave you the money chooses to, um, to give you a chance or to take a chance on you and says, okay, because of your situation, because you came to me, you can't honor our agreement because of this and this, um, I will be patient with you. I don't think the Lord is angry with that. The Lord sees that you're faithful. The Lord sees your heart is willing to pay, yeah. but you just can't and you're working hard to do that. So I really don't think um, borrowing is a sin, but I think it's how we react to the people we have borrowed from. Mm -hmm. And if our hearts are willing to honor those agreements or if we just really don't want to pay back. That's mm -hmm. what I think. Great. Thank you so much. Sister Marjorie. Mm -hmm. Sister Marjorie is saying we should honor our agreement. If we don't honor that, that's not true. And if you die while paying off your debt, then she says that's not a big, that's not a problem because you are honoring your words. Right? She does not think you will go to hell for dying while you are paying off your debts. Okay. Sister Kessie. I have to agree. Uh huh. You have to agree. I mean, I agree with Marjorie. Um, with debt, you know, even in the in the Bible, for example, that man who went before the king, he owed the king a lot of money. Yes. And um, the king forgave him because he went and he explained his situation, and um, he forgave him the debt. But the thing, key thing is that you have to honor the agreement. Yeah. It's not a sin to go get a loan, but um, you have to have a way of actually repaying that loan. Mm -hmm. Like majority of the things that have been acquired, especially in Europe, I don't know about Africa, like a mortgage, you cannot even afford a house to go pay cash. Yeah. You must have a mortgage, you know. Unless maybe you're coming from a millionaire family. <laughs> or unless you have saved up for 30 years. Yeah, that's basically your life. Um, <laughs> and even if you save up for that long, um, you might not even own it by then, you know, because the property values are going up. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and Pastor, I think that uh, sometimes we need to apply wisdom if you're going to borrow, let's say you want a mortgage, right? Yeah. You go to the bank and the bank says, you have to give us $800 every month for the property that you want. Mm -hmm. And you know that even if you combine your income with that of your husband or whoever you're doing it with, it cannot amount to $800. Your job is unstable, you know, or maybe you have a job, but it's not that well-paying but you go ahead to make the agreement that yes, you will pay when you know you are not able to, right? Mm -hmm. And then the bank starts withdrawing the money and uh, one month, two months later, you go back to say, well, my job is unstable. Mm -hmm. But before you entered that agreement, you knew you cannot That's afford it. Yeah. But then you went ahead to make the agreement that you're able to only to give up in the middle. I don't think the Lord can excuse that because you knew. But there are some people who have good hearts. Mm -hmm. They need the money, they work hard, and they know that they will, they will make the payment. Mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. And there are others that will borrow and run away from you. Mm -hmm. Yet they have, but they don't want to pay you back. They want you to keep on calling, demanding mm -hmm. for the money. Mm -hmm. You're causing confusion and you're causing someone to become bitter and complain before the Lord. And I don't think, I think that is what the Lord judges. You're wicked because you borrowed and you don't want to pay. Sometimes if you even have the means, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then we compare that to someone who borrowed and recognized that they really thought they had the means to pay. Mm -hmm. But let's say because of COVID or things like that. And they go back to the bank and say, is there another alternative that we can pay something smaller? Mm -hmm for the debt that we took. Yeah. Because right now, if you go to the bank, even if it's a credit card, they have some programs to allow you to pay $20 a month for a debt as big as $5,000 because of COVID. That's a big difference from, from someone who will just sit down and know that they cannot afford and wait for the bank to call them each and every single time for representatives to be calling and calling. But if you know you're a Christian and you can die any time and heaven is important to you, you will search for means of peace to settle with your debtors yes. so that they will not complain before the Lord on your behalf. Definitely. And in, the, in terms of borrowing, well, I don't know about Canada, but here before they can lend you any money, they have to assess your income any side hassles you have and you have to show proof of income for at least three months you have for employment you have to show pay slips for at least three months to verify your level of income and then they will they will only lend to you based on your capability so they want to see you're firstly employed is it permanent is it a temporary job they will want to see a letter from your employer stating that you are a permanent employer. Like, sorry, you are mm. permanently employed. And um, even for the small little loans, um, they also, they verify everything as, uh, you know, rounded. And for a mortgage, they only give you three times your, your income, your salary, because they also include the factors of whether you have children, you get a lesser, um, loan because they know there's demanding um, there's demands that come upon you when you have children mm -hmm. and what else do they consider they consider if you have any other debt so if you have any debt previously they will um, they will offer you a lower amount so for example in I think okay in Europe it would be hard unless maybe you you cook the books you uh, misappropriate mm. your funds and you give a fraudulent um, statement, etc. Mm -hmm. Then obviously you are corrupt. You are not being truthful in the first place. Mm -hmm. In Africa, I know people can also cook books <laughs> because I, I think they search for similar um, uh, financial statements, your, your income, they ask if you have the side hassles, you know, because most people in Africa, like they're entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, so really, obviously, if you are going to be corrupt, you're corrupt. <laughs> if you lie, you're a liar already. Um, yeah. But for me, when I was talking about debt, um, I was thinking it's okay to borrow debt. Obviously, you have to know I can afford this minus your expenses, mm -hmm. what you are able, it can be deducted from your bank account every month without you suffering. <laughs> yeah. But here they always take that into, into, they take it as a factor before, you know, providing you the loan. Indeed, yeah, uh, even here. Indeed, we Even here. And because of COVID, the government uh, was a bit, uh, Lenient. Merciful, I think. Lenient, yes. That's a better word. They gave out even more loans during COVID. They kind of uh, made it easy on people who had mortgages and stuff like that. Um, rates were very, were reduced. Mm -hmm. 
and as well some of them were told not to pay anything for for a given amount of time they had to because, because of the situation job. so you can't some people who are working in retail or hospitality industry um you know if you have been imposed on a like for us level five lockdown they actually have to provide you with some sort of income to sustain you for the period of the lockdown so they have to reduce the rates and they also have to compensate the banks because the banks will say okay you have you have asked us to reduce this certain amount for you you also have to reduce our charges to us you know yeah, yeah. so they they hit it back it's only africa that is corrupt they do things and they will not fulfill it you know <laughs> It's all in paper. We will help you, blah, blah, blah. When it actually comes into the implementation, there's nothing like that. Uh -huh. Of course, governments have uh, changed their way they do things. Uh, mm. Of course, there are all these stimulus packages and uh, giving out more loans to businesses and individuals as a result of COVID. Now, I want, uh, talking about what uh, Sister Kathy and Sister Marjorie were talking about, about the bank and how they have to make sure that you can pay them back. Yeah. Uh, are you are you having a stable job? That's why they want to see whether uh, you've been having a job for the past three months and your income for the past three months. Are you able to pay back? Mm. Because it's a business. The bank is a business, right? Yep. Um, and they have to make profit from you. They have to make money. <laughs> and they make money by giving people debts. And of course, we have other sources of debts. Debts from family members, debts from fam, uh, friends, uh, and also from cash loans. In Namibia, there is a mushroom of cash loans. I don't know other places, but you can literally get a loan in five minutes, they advertise. Oh, well, the banks here have introduced it, but it's only up to the amount of like 1,000, depending on also your capability to, re to return. <laughs> And, and, and when you look at that, uh, when you look at the scriptures and what the scripture says about debt, now trying to uh, address the question of uh, whether getting into debt is a sin. The Bible says very clearly the borrower is slave to the lender, right? Yeah. And when you think of that, that is not a small thing, right? Mm. But the Bible does not specifically say that it's a sin to be in debt but it says that the borrower is a slave to the lender. Yeah. Uh, and what are the practical implications of that? That means um, you are indebted for as long as you are in debt. When you work, you are working to pay back the one from whom you got your money. So you're not just working for yourself. You're not working for your children. You're not working for your future, but you're working in order to pay back the other person. And you are bound to the terms of the agreement, as it has been mentioned by Brother Habil and Sister Marjorie. Yeah. And, uh, and the problem is this. The human nature makes it so difficult for us to pay back our debts. That's why in Europe, they have all these stringent measures in place to make sure that they don't leave anything to chance. <laughs> because it's so difficult for people to pay back their de the debts that they owe. In, in, in Namibia, they, people, they go to their banks, to their ATMs, to withdraw money at midnight. Immediately the money, immediately they get their salaries because yeah. they have so many debts. Some of them have so much debt. After their bank and the tax and the social security and everybody else got what they want from their salary, from a whole salary of 20,000, whatever, Maybe they'll, they'll be only left with 3,000 something. <laughs> and it's painful. Yeah. Flavoring, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's very painful. You are, your, your whole check, out of your entire check, you're only getting maybe 1% to spend on your, on your monthly needs. And so people go to the ATM to withdraw money before the bank begins to take its charges. But then you're going to be perse like they're going to penalize you. Definitely, of course. <laughs> where the that's where the slavery is. Isn't it? Now you are a slave to the bank, and you know the, the, the loans. No loan. This is one one mindset we need to. to, to this is one uh, important principle we need to understand. That no loan is ever designed to really help you. 
yeah, the bank, that's how they make money, by creating debts. They give you imaginary money, then they make profit out of that when you begin to pay them back. So we need to, to understand that the borrower is a slave to the lender, and as long as you, you get yourself into debt, you will not be free until you pay back the last penny. Because under the agreement, of course, you give them the, the power to even sell your property, isn't it? To, to, to make a profit on what they gave you. The bank can come and take anything of value if you are failing to, if you are defaulting on your, on your loan, or if you are failing to pay back. The bank can come and sell other things in order to make a profit. Oh, yeah, they can do that. <laughs> I think in other countries, they can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And we live in a debt culture that, as Christians, I believe we'll do wise to try and um, separate ourselves from this debt culture. I mm. know that um, a lot of businesses are, are surrounded, they are, they, are, they are immersed in debts. We are living in a debt culture that uses debt as a way of starting business. They use debt to, to finance literally nearly everything that they have. And uh, when you get, when you make a habit of getting loans from family and friends, it ruins friendships. It ruins families. Yeah. Uh, getting, being in a habit of getting debts from the cash loans from the bank. I think it, it, uh, it affects your ability to be a good budgeter. Now there are things like buying a, a house as a, Senior Pastor Catherine said, which is not easy to buy with your monthly salary, and it's not easy to save up for 20 years, 30 years uh, to buy a house. Uh, I think 50 years before you get the house you want. Yes. And, and, <laughs> and so yeah. it is probably the only thing that I would say will not be a big problem to get into debt with as long as you, you have your good budgets and you have stable income. Otherwise, you end up losing your house as well. So, uh, if I would, I would advise us try to stay away from uh, having a habit of asking debts, asking loans from family members, because it, it sours relationships. It really does. It sours especially our friendship. when you don't pay. <laughs> yes, especially when you don't pay. Rather, rather than having a debt mindset, let us begin to cultivate uh, a mindset of uh, budget, a financial accountability. Let us be financially accountable by learning how to budget so that we can learn to live within our means. I have a question, right? Yes. You said, you know, for a business um, acquiring a loan from the bank. But sometimes I think you need the, like, for example, you are beginning your business. Mm -hmm. And you need this money so that you can get off like on the ground. Yeah, it takes but a lot of money. Sometimes you actually don't have that capital yourself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you say, I'm going to save up, it would have been too late, you know? Yeah. So I think maybe if you have a plan on how you're going to meet those repayments and uh, because, okay, for the entrepreneurs, Sometimes you need that kind of a boost to kind of get you started. You need, you need investors, yes. Because sometimes people, when you're starting off, they don't want to invest in your company because they don't know whether this thing will take off and yes. whether my money will ever come back. Yes. And not everybody is well wishers there that will just give you. <laughs> Definitely. It's a big gamble. It's a big gamble. So I think if you have a good business proposal that you can bring to the bank and you you... You have a fairly good idea that it's going to help you mm -hmm. um, get running. Then, okay, for me, I don't find something wrong with it because you might do the like the mini hassles here and there, and it, you will never acquire the money that you need to actually begin that business. Um, with, with respect to business, yes, that's very true. It takes a lot of money. Starting a business takes a whole lot of money. It's like buying a house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's not. It's 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 near. It's near impractical for everybody to first save up money before they can start the business that they want to start. Yeah, it's not mm. easy. 
yeah. and, and there may be need to get into debt or to get a loan, to get a um, yeah, loan from the bank or from wherever mm. uh, in order to finance your projects, your businesses. Yes. But I would say before you get it, before anybody gets into debt, make sure that you have your good budget and you have a clear pathway on how you are going to repay. Repay. Yeah. And how you are going to make sure that you live within your means. Yeah. 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 We must begin learn how to live on a budget. But the problem is this: most of us don't know how to handle money. Yeah. Uh, most of us don't know how to handle money. And therefore, a small, small money that we get, if you get a hundred dollars here, you get a thousand dollars here, it will finish in, in one week. The same week you get it, money finishes. Because, and so, it depends where it finishes. Maybe you have put it in your savings. <laughs> well, that's different. That's different now. Putting it in savings is <laughs> not finishing the money. <laughs> but you don't have it anymore, so it feels like it's. <laughs> That is, that is a better way to spend money when you put it in savings. <laughs> if we can call that spending. But it's <laughs> we need to learn how to budget. Yeah? Learn how to budget. When you learn how to budget, then you can easily, then you, you, you learn how to, how to channel your, your finances. Yeah? How to put money into savings and then to live within your means. You budget everything so that you do not live beyond your means so that the little that you have does not uh, get finished unduly or too quickly. So budgeting, 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 budgeting. If a family member wants to borrow money from you, I will strongly advise you to consider against it. But sometimes they're very much in need, so. Or oh, just consider giving them instead. Yes, just giving give, them instead. Not borrow. Yes. If you can find a way to give without borrowing, uh, that will save you a lot of heartache and blood pressure. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of family, fam family relations have been ruined by debt. Family members are the worst people to give money to. As a matter yeah, of fact. Yes, because, you know, you are so close. You are, uh, you, are, you are such a sweet family member. You are never going to force them to pay back. But you see, the reason why they come to you is probably because they cannot get the loan from the bank because they are bad. <laughs> <laughs> they are bad at paying back debts. <laughs> and most of the time, maybe when we are giving them, we should not expect something in return. That's it. They know you are not going yeah. to, 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 to force them to pay back. So, I strongly advise us do your best. If you can give somebody money, you know, I give you a hundred dollars. They are saying, please loan me a thousand dollars, and that's all you have. Ah, in the in the for the love of Christ, eh? even though they are brothers and sisters in Christ, or they uh, they are your closest friends, try try to to find a way not to borrow them money for your own for the sake of peace. Mm -hmm. Try not to borrow money. If you can give them a portion of what they're asking for, then give them generously. And say, okay, mm -hmm. I can give you a hundred dollars. No, you want a thousand, but I cannot give you a thousand. Me, I'm but, a good person to return. I always return my, my borrowings. <laughs> you are a very rare gem, Pastor Catherine. <laughs> I even inform you that I'm sorry I've not given to you back. You know, I like telling somebody, like if mm -hmm. I've delayed. Yes. That I've not forgotten. I still remember and I'm going to give it to them rather than those people who just go silent on you. Hey. One, one time I was so frustrated because this guy borrowed money from me and um, or should, yes. And, and they said, I'll pay you in, on, on Friday. Friday came. The person did not even say a word. Not even a, you know, a <laughs> hi by mistake. A hello by mistake. <laughs> That's the most frustrating I'm telling you when they commit. <laughs> I had to spend my extra money to call the person back, to call the person, still not picking up my, my, my calls. It is very <laughs> frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Mm. Especially yes. when you are counting they on that. Know money. Why you're calling. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> 
because why would you promise and put a date on it yeah when you know you won't be able to make it by that date yeah indeed that is wickedness to be doing some of yeah. them i guess they actually don't know they're not going to be able to to repay you back at that particular time mm-hmm. but i always say to somebody notify me you know yeah. so if i have lent you money and we agreed at a certain date tell me Definitely. before that date i can't at least if i had planned that money that i'm going to use it for something or pay to somewhere mm-hmm. i know that money is not coming on that day <laughs> yes so i'm i'm prepared so maybe the other commitments i have i'll i'll have to find out where i'm going to get that money from mm-hmm. but to just go silent i'm texting i'm calling hey it's very it's very wicked but they do yeah. that they do that and uh out out of fear out of whatever sometimes they are, they did not get the money they were hoping to get on that day and now they are afraid to tell you they are ashamed that you are going to scold them and all these complicated things involved uh but if we learn to budget you learn to budget you stay out of trouble you really stay out of trouble for your, yourself <clears throat> and in your budget if you are such a generous person then you can set aside an amount of money you are not anybody's savior you are not the savior of the world your small salary will not save the problems of the world <laughs> so, <laughs> so don't so don't think that when somebody comes and asks you for $10,000 then your $10,000 are going to solve their problems you can set aside a small amount of money to give to whoever is going to ask you it doesn't have to be 100% of what they ask you for yeah but budget budget for your bills and don't use your bill the money for your bills and to spend it on other things uh budget for your transport budget for your internet budget for your everything and live within that amen yeah if you can learn to be faithful with the small amount of money god gives you then you'll be able to handle the bigger amount of money that the lord is going to bring in the future and right. budget also for giving, you know. Eh? For giving to those who need. De- definitely, you budget for that. You give to the needy. That's right. So budgeting, let us learn how to budget and do our best to stay out of debt unless it's really necessary for things like uh, buying a house. Yeah. <laughs> and starting a business. But even then, don't do it rashly. Money matters are very serious matters. Don't rush into any debt. Don't rush at all. That's true. Uh, I also think that um, now if you are in, in, your, in your house mortgage, in the middle of paying your house mortgage and then you die, I don't think you'll go to hell. The insurance the Bible, pays it off. <laughs> yes, if you have insurance. The Bible does not speak about mortgage. In fact... <laughs> Mortgage, mortgage things are very new, yeah. Um, but I don't think, to the best of my understanding, is um, no, it's not a sin to die in debt. That, that was pay. actually my question: Is it a sin, or not even a sin? Would you go to hell if your mortgage is not paid by the time you die? I don't think you go to hell, but I think whoever is in debt and is refusing to pay back. Is, you know, when you are refusing to pay back, you are also incorporating lies and dodging yeah. mechanisms. Mm-hmm. And that is punishable by the Lord. <laughs> you, you cannot be dodging and uh, devising lying mechanisms to, to, to avoid paying back what you owe. Yeah. Um, and expect the Lord to be happy with you because when you look at Matthew chapter 18, he talks about the servant who owed his master and how that... Uh, when he, he when he mistreated the other servant who asked for mercy even less you owed him less hey yeah way less <laughs> then the master said I, how, how wicked can you be you put someone in jail for 10 pounds and yet you owe me 100 million pounds. <laughs> what is wicked that's what very wicked going to jail until you pay the last penny so so you see there the problem is uh, he was not faith. He was not um, an honest person. Yeah. And he was taking advantage of the other guy. All right. 
Um, I think we have handled forgiveness. I mean, whether somebody is going to hell for owning debts. But please, eh, I beg everybody of us here, don't run into debts. Even if you have seen your favorite mm -hmm. car, your most favorite car, <laughs> try your best to stay out of debt. Those guys giving loans there, all they want is to make money from you. It's not to help mm -hmm. you get your favorite car. <laughs> Amen. Of course, some, Amen. some of the people that you, you may find yourself envying, driving very nice cars, they're in, they're in, the, in the hole, they're in deep depths and they're having sleepless nights. You know, that's the thing about that. It gives people sleepless nights. <laughs> And when you are in debt and someone is calling you, you are afraid it may be the debt collectors. <laughs> you can't sleep. You can't sleep. You are having nightmares. All right. Is it okay to get married without any source of income? Aye. Is it okay? Well, it's possible to get married without source of income, but is it wise? Uh, it may not be wise, depending on your circumstances. If you are in the village, yeah, if you grew up in the village, like some of us, uh, and uh, you have lived all your life in the village, and um, yeah, you, 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 and you don't need to have a, to have what? So, you know, when you have village life, you have your own farm there, and it's really self sustaining. Village life is really self sustaining. You don't have to go into any, Form of debt. It's not like city life. Yeah. When you live in remote remote places, it's not like city life. So I don't think it will you you necessarily need to have a certain level of income to, to get married. You don't need a certain level of income to get married, but you need to be able to sustain yourself. Yeah. Uh, you can get married without any source of income. You can but you must be ready for the challenges that come with it. Yeah. If you decide to get married with, without, but I would advise against, especially if you live in cities, in big cities, and you and your future spouse don't have any source of income. That's suicide. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would strongly advise against it. It's like you're shooting yourself in the foot knowingly. Definitely. <laughs> Because when you get married, you don't have any source of income. And then you end up not having food to eat, just food. You find yourself begging. You find yourself in the street begging. And that's not good. Praise the Lord. Sister Marjorie. Yes, please. Uh, did you want to speak? It was an echo. Okay. Side. Yes. So, oh, sorry about that. So, so when, 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 when we get married and none of us, not you, not your spouse, future spouse, your fiancé, your fiancée, is, uh, is, is having any source of income, as, sister, as Pastor Catherine said, it's suicide. Yeah. Really. And you are living in this past world of ours. If you are willing to stay in a, in a low, you know, in a, in a place like the remote places, really remote, where you just depend on agriculture, well, you can do that. You can easily do that. Uh, because you but work. still, even if you're in agriculture, you're maybe selling your produce to get something, you know? Yeah, even that, it will require that. Therefore, yeah. we must do our best to do something. Yeah. Yes. We must not be so so lazy as to just want to get married just like that and consider monetary issues as non-important. We should not do that. That's a serious mistake. That's a serious yeah. mistake. Yeah, it will bring a lot of stress. It will. It will. Definitely. You have to find work. I don't know whether you end up being a, a, a cleaner at the primary school, you end up being a cook somewhere, some it restaurant, bring, end up being a, a waiter, <laughs> just do something. 
it's better than nothing at all. At yeah. least you can put food in the table. Mm -hmm. Or you, you just wash people's clothes. Just do something. Very, very true. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because if you don't do anything and you are saying the Lord will meet our needs. <laughs> well, I know the Lord will meet your needs. You don't want <laughs> <laughs> the Lord will meet her needs. <laughs> the Lord can meet your needs, but if you're not going to work, <laughs> only Elijah received food through birds when birds were bringing him food. Only yeah, the Israelites say that working. when the Lord gave them food. Yes, that is not promised for the rest of us. <laughs> but Elijah was even working, he wasn't just sitting. You. you know what I mean? There it is. There it is. That is it. He was not lazing around by the brook doing nothing. That's it. He was busy working. Yeah. We must be about doing something. We discussed this last time. Yes. The importance of making sure we work. Yeah. So it is it is not advisable. It is yeah, it's really not okay. You can do it, but it's not okay. Because you are you're walking like walking into water with your boots on. Everybody can see the dangers ahead. All right. Unless if you really don't care and you just want to get married. <laughs> <laughs> and you are saying, come what may, I know better. That's a very dangerous mindset to have. All right. How do married couples do their budgeting? Is it negotiable? How, do my, how does my wife and I do our budgeting? Well, we, we have... Uh, Number one, you work together. You must both agree that you need to do your budget. Right? You must both agree that you need to budget. Um, we have a spreadsheet on our computer. And together, we identify items that we are paying for. And so you work together. It's teamwork. Really mm -hmm. teamwork. If one party does not want the party who is interested should still do their best to, to budget. <laughs> yes. If you are the wife and you are the only one who is interested in budgeting, or you are the husband, you are the only one who is interested in budgeting, then just go ahead and do your best to budget. <clears throat> but you must do it. You must work together. And you must also seek help, some the help of a financial advisor, should you need to. Yeah, if things are difficult, uh, you may find yourself indeed having difficult conversations. Because when, when you're talking about budgeting, you, you bring everything, you account for everything. You nearly account for everything. You account for everything you're spending money on to ensure that you are living within your means. As somebody said, budgeting is telling your money where to go rather than wondering where it went. So you are really... Uh, identifying what you spend your money on and why you spend your money on that thing. Yeah. There's things like electricity that come up different prices every month. So that one is a bit, you can give a rough estimate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, giving our example here. We, uh, you know, the beauty of a budget is you know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know that roughly every month I spend a hundred or let's say a thousand Canadian pound uh, dollars. I spend a hundred a thousand Canadian dollars on my monthly expenses. And so you know that that's where you, you fluctuate. Sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. So you don't end up spending money on things that you don't need. Yeah. So budgeting allows you to identify um, items important items that you spend money on. As Sister, uh, Pastor Catherine said, uh, electricity, these days, <clears throat> internet, phone, your phone, phone bills, yeah? your phone calls. And then what else is that? Your transportation, your food. Thank God my transportation has been on hold for, <laughs> for a whole year. And <laughs> That's a good way of saving also, isn't it? For how long? whole year school fees school fees yes all those things so you enter them you enter them 
also gifts, everything goes there. So that you account, so that you know that, so that whenever you get your, 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 your income, I wish I could show you my, my, my budgeting sheet. So that when, you're, when your income comes in, you already know what is going where. How much amount of money is going to which item. So you're not surprised that we had $20,000 that came in and all of a sudden we have 5,000 only. Where did the 15,000 go? And then you end up having an argument with your spouse. So uh, budgeting allows you to be on the same page. You have receipts for those 15,000. <laughs> not everybody gets <laughs> receipts these days. <laughs> no, you do get a form of receipt, even if it's electronic. Yes, that's it. On the bank, yes. <laughs> the bank always keeps electronic receipts. That's it. Or the credit card. <laughs> that's right. So uh, budgeting, budgeting, do it together. My wife and I, we, we attended a course on budgeting. Um, and then we started doing our budgeting together. And it's been very helpful so that uh, none of us is wondering what, where, did, where did the money go to? And because of that, as we are here, we are here speaking with you, for example, we have already, um, we have already paid for our you know, levies for the rest of the year. So when you identify important areas where that you need to spend your finance on, so you do things like that. <clears throat> you pay for your levies early in advance. And if you are in places like uh, Russia, where you can pay for your transportation for three months in advance, then you do that. It's always um, the best thing. It's such a relief. <laughs> very much. Very, yes. very much. I yeah. agree with that. <laughs> you never have to worry about finding money every month to go and pay. You just pay three months in advance and then you are you know, free. And you settle. Yes, already settle. You have free uh, freedom freedom in your mind about that. Yes. You won't have to worry later. Where's the money? Where's the money? Because if you don't <laughs> plan, if you don't budget, you end up using that money for transport, next month's transport. If you only pay for this month and you don't pay for the next month, you end up using next month's transport on something else. And then when next month comes, you'll be shocked. There's no money for transport. Oh my, what did I do to myself? then tempted to go into debt. So when you can plan ahead, pay for your transport three months ahead, pay for your levies or for your, what is that? For, your, for those that have homes, we call them levies. What is the other one? When you are renting, your rent. <laughs> you pay for your rent, maybe five months ahead. Such hey, a relief. Five months, what? <laughs> Where is that money coming from to be paying five months? <laughs> from your savings. No, you can, you can, by the way, because you never know about tomorrow. Anyway. I don't know which places you guys live that you're maybe paying, you're paying, you know, lunch money for your rent. Huh? Lunch <laughs> money, which lunch money? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lunch, lunch money. You can't even yeah. buy bread for. So basically it's that cheap that you can just pay your rent in five months, you know? No, it's not that cheap. It's all about budgeting. If you have multiple businesses, maybe. That's oh, no, no, no. That thing is all about planning. I mean, you're supposed to plan let's, yourself so well. And... Let's start off by how much you earn, yeah, and how much your rent is. Like, how, what is the rate of the rent in your area? Now, we start from there, and then you tell me nine months, uh, five months. If then you I... earn 15,000 and your rent is 1,000, yeah, you can take 5,000 and pay for the next five months. Which five, yeah. which 15,000 are you talking about? Is it euro or some other currency? I don't know. Let's talk about euros. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> not Kenya, not, not Kenya. <laughs> not Kenya. Kenya, you, you find yourself at 20,000 shillings. 100,000 shillings? Something like that. Yeah, so budgeting, as Pastor Salah said, it's all about budgeting and planning. Budgeting and planning. No, tell me. You have said I can be able to pay five months. Now tell me how I can do it with euros. Now okay. let's start there. 
if you get paid, yeah, if you get paid, let's say 2,000 euros, that's a uh -huh. big pay. Yeah? <laughs> it's not. It's not. Oh, oh my, 5,000? I know. Hey, here in, I wish. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> I know in, uh, in, the, in the UK, okay, in England, uh, 2,000 is quite a lot of money. 2,000 pounds a month is quite a lot. No, it is. But I'm saying, obviously, when you come to your expenses, it's not so much. You know what I mean? No, but because you're trying to live within your means, there are certain things that you cannot live without. Between paying your rent and buying uh, Coca-Cola every day, which one is more important? I'll take rent. Obviously. Am I going to live <laughs> outside? <laughs> Between buying lunch at work and making sure I pay my rent, which one is more important? I'll take lunch. paying my rent. Yeah? Uh, so I want you to tell me, out of that, that um, 2000 per month, mm -hmm. yeah? And then your rent. Your rent say it's 200 uh, pounds. Which place are you living? <laughs> is that a squatter? I, I don't even know what I can. There is no place for 200. <laughs> I think he's just giving an example. That's what I'm, I'm trying to, to get out of him. I'm trying to explain how it's difficult to achieve paying five months rent in advance. Look, because there is nowhere that you can get a place for 200. I wish there was such a place. Man, I would be looking right now. Look, <laughs> even if, look at this. Even if, uh -huh. let's say, you get 2,000 pounds, your rent is 900 pounds, okay? Or 1,000 pounds, whichever one. All right. And then your transport is 200 pounds. And then whatever, your, 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 your food comes down to 300 pounds. And then at the end of the day, you're only left with 200 pounds. Of course, uh, you take your 200 pounds, you put it in the bank, in your savings, having your transport and everything else paid. Then Don't the for next month, city, food, um, food, internet. transport, and your insurance for your car and everything. Your tithes. Your tithes and everything. And you are left with 200 at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. 200 pounds. You save that up, isn't it? For the first month is 200. The second month, that's already 400 pounds. And then the next one, that's already 600 pounds, right? So it doubles every month. Your 200, you put in your, in your savings. At the end of the day, you find yourself, you have uh, enough in your savings, you have enough to pay to cover for an extra month. And then, let me add, mm -hmm. we have a meeting coming up. Mm -hmm. So you're going to say that one is that one is for my advance rent. Well, that's that's why you budget. If you know there's a meeting coming up, and then your budget is already, you already know that I'm saving up for the meeting and also for uh, uh, for this other item for for, for, for my rent. So you, for when you are going for a meeting, the, the consideration is hotel. Mm -hmm. Travel tickets, mm -hmm. transport to the airport back and fro, uh -huh. food. Uh -huh. And the meetings are always adv advertised maybe many uh -huh. months in so, advance. 2019, it was not well. In <laughs> oh, we have been saving up for many months. Hey, no. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, there was a time but when... That's why it's important to save. Yeah, the savings. You have to be saving. Yes. You that's save during that period. That's why savings are important. During that period when there was no traveling, that's the time to save. That is the time to invest. Not <laughs> Same thing, Pastor Catherine. Save, invest, save, invest. Whether you put in a, in a unit trust account where the money is being used up by other businesses to bring back the return uh, with some interest. Anyway, let's move on because I can know what is achievable and what's not achievable. <laughs> so planning and budgeting. That will help us to stay out of debts and to live within our means. Our property is supposed to be under the mail or under both? Okay, under both. The one who paid. All of both of you, if you are married. <laughs> the important thing is to not discriminate one another. The husband is the one who has bought the house before marriage. Then 
he should not take that against the wife and say, you, you own nothing in this house. I'm the one who bought this house. That is wickedness. Mm -hmm. You can't be speaking to your spouse as if they are useless. Doesn't matter how much money you earn. Whether you earn six-figure income or you earn zero-figure income, you, as a spouse, in that marriage, you are one. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One. Whether you earn 100,000, when that money comes, it's our money. It's not my money or your money. It, it will be a struggle at the beginning to really get that into, to drill that into the head. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't come easy. <laughs> but eventually, it must get in. It must get in here. So that when the, when the salary comes in, you're not saying my salary, but our salary, our money. I don't even think I'll have said our salary or not. It would have been used for something new <laughs> without prior discussion. <laughs> Which is why so Pastor, you... I have a question. Sorry, bless her, Bishop, I have a question. Yeah. Yes, sister. Um, yes. Let's say, for example... I'm not talking about uh, the man. Let's say the woman has a certain property mm -hmm. for years. Let's say, I'll give an example, five years or four years before she got married, right? Mm -hmm. If she gets married, she's supposed to still transfer that property to both names of herself and her husband. Um, somebody has had a property for? For like years before they got mm -hmm. married. Uh-huh. And it's a woman, right? Uh -huh. Because in, in most circumstances, it's not the woman that brings the man into the home yeah. after marriage. Yeah. It's mostly the men who bring their wives home. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a woman has a property, let's say for five years mm -hmm. or four years. Okay, even if it's one year before marriage. Yeah. Well, After she gets married, she's supposed to transfer it into both her, herself and her husband's name. Yes, oh, that's you, have, before. <laughs> you have to work out a pathway to blend everything. Okay. Yes, you have to work out a way to blend everything. Definitely. See, my wife and I, she's here, she's here. <laughs> okay, she's not here. <laughs> there is nothing that I have that's not hers. It's ours. Yeah. It's, it's totally ours. Because the Bible is very clear, the two shall become one flesh. So the two mm -hmm. are one. Um, the, the laws, our, our national laws that try to make distinctions, marrying in community of property, marrying out of community of property, and all these prenuptial agreements, and whatever agreements, these are not biblical uh, agreements. These are not biblical. These are men trying to fix a spiritual problem uh, that only God can solve. Because of, there is so much unfaithfulness. People are getting married for the wrong reason. People's marriages are not lasting more than two years, two months. Yeah? Mm. So people are getting married knowing that in the next few weeks, months, years, this marriage may disintegrate. That's why they came up with all these issues. Uh, yeah. But as Christians, our mindset is different. We are supposed to get married for life. Yeah? We are supposed to be committed until the Messiah comes, until death do us, does us part. When we get married, because marriage is, a, is, is it mirrors the image of God. Marriage is supposed to be the, <clears throat> the image of God. Husband representing Christ, the wife representing the church, and the two in unity as Christ is one with the church together, inseparable, in holy matrimony, in this everlasting covenant that cannot be broken by any human institution. As Jesus said, what God put together, let no man put asunder. So that is the mindset we carry as Christians when we enter into marriage. So if I have a business, I have a school, should I have had a business or a school before I got married, then that school will belong to both of us. I must find any legal means to find a way to uh, to make my wife also a part of that rather than to keep it all to myself. 
Now, I'm not sure if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes, blessed Bishop. Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, the practical aspect thereof, uh, of course, differs from country to country. Huh? Um, with respect to if you have a business, what is the way, the pathway in which you can make your husband part of that, make your wife part of that? The, the things are different. Yeah, I don't know how they do it in Canada. I don't know how they do it in Dublin or in Kenya. But you have it's your responsibility as a husband, it's your responsibility as a wife to ensure that whatever is yours is your husband's. Whatever is your husband's is yours. 50-50 marriage is not biblical. Where I, I have my share and you have your share. When I get my income, it's mine. I share with you if I want to. That's not biblical. It's not biblical. Either. All right. And okay, I think we are done with this topic. Are we? That, that topic. That topic has been so powerful. I really, I, I miss some things, but I, 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 I will go through. I really, I've really enjoyed it. By the way, Amen. I really enjoyed and learned a lot. Learned just a lot. Well, very wonderful, Pastor Silas. Um, it is a very important topic. You know, when you get married, then it begins to make even more sense. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> it begins to make even more sense when you get married. You read it's good a lot to of have these topics with your spouse. <laughs> yes, you must have this discussion before marriage. I will one day that day I, I will discuss all these things. Okay, thank you. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's talk about forgiveness. What do you guys think about forgiveness? It's crucial for any relationship. Uh -huh. We are talking about now the languages of apology. We have one hour left. The languages. No? I can't even remember the then. Where's the book? <laughs> <laughs> All right. How important is forgiveness? What do you think about? What do you think about forgiveness? What do you think about forgiveness? Let me let me start it. Let me start it off. Uh huh. The first time. <laughs> Yes, uh, I really bless the Lord. Thank you so much, blessed senior bishop, for according me this chance. And so, forgiveness is so wide, just like Pastor Catherine has put it. And what you know that there's nobody in the face of the earth that doesn't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mistake and sin is different, but then there's nobody in the face of the earth that doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. So, like when we put it to the marriage perspective or just a broader perspective, a wider perspective rather, we get to know that if you, two people that are in one house, raised, like I always say, raised by another person, and you're being brought together, there are weaknesses that each of you might be having. So what I know, people are prone to mistakes. So when somebody makes a mistake, the key thing is always to forgive. Like the Bible says that if you don't forgive, our heavenly father also will not forgive us. So owing to the fact that our main aim is to enter the kingdom of God, when somebody wrongs me, the good thing is to sit down, say, honey, um, here, I'm sorry to use that word, but allow me for today. <laughs> here, you... Why are you sorry? <laughs> okay, thank you, Senior Bishop, for rebuking me. So, yeah. say, honey, honey, look, uh, here, you, you, you didn't do well, and I was really offended. So next time, please, don't do this. Um, forgiven you. But I, I, it really, uh, really touched my heart. Something like that, so that now you live in peace. That really brings Hebrews 12, uh, 14, living in peace with, with all men and to be holy. So forgiveness is so wide. And if you don't forgive really, that marriage, have you ever seen people in the house? Some of them are driving in one car and they don't talk. Somebody is looking the other side of the window. One <laughs> is looking <laughs> east, one is looking west. <laughs> yes, that <laughs> is really difficult. And by that, the devil can get a foothold to come in and bring so many things. And that marriage, 70% 70, 70 it might it can be destroyed. Thank you, Sina Bishop. I'll come in later, even as Amen. I remember many points. Thank you. Indeed. Uh, forgiveness, that is the 
the healing, yeah? Forgiveness brings healing. Without forgiveness, there is no healing in marriage. Yeah? Absolutely. And we need healing so much. You know, when you get married, you encounter your share of conflict. It's just the way it is. Hallelujah. It's normal. Just the way it is. You encounter <laughs> many, many challenges. You encounter conflict. You have serious conflict. And they must happen. Because of our differences. And you hurt one another. Yeah? Because you are both new to the institution of marriage. Both of you know better. Both of you are wiser than the other. So you end up saying things that hurt each other. That hurt the other person. Okay? That hurt as a, as a woman, you end up hurting your husband. As a husband, you end up hurting your wife. And, and then you'll be confronted with this issue of forgiveness. Because otherwise, if you don't forgive, then you'll be left with resentment and... Um, what is the word? Resentment and anger and bitterness. Okay, Sister Meke, what are you saying? No, senior bishop. All right. How many times should you forgive someone? 77 times. What does that mean? Every time. <laughs> Endlessly. It means Endlessly. It means every now and then. Because I try to imagine mm. if, suppose somebody cannot wrong me like even more than 10 times in a day. So if, if he's ready to forgive, he forgive for. I mean, it's something that is supposed to be part and parcel of your, of your, of, I mean, of your life. Like, like taking water. When you're thirsty, you need to take water. So that's what forgiveness is supposed to be. <laughs> like, just forgive, generally, just forgive. I know sometimes it's hard, but that's why you, you, when you feel like somebody has offended you, you don't be quick to react. Because you're human beings, you have got weaknesses. Just go down, pray to God, repent, tell God to help you then. Always forgive. Because remember, can you imagine... I always try to imagine this when it comes to entry to the kingdom of God. That yeah. if today Blessed Senior Bishop finds me doing something wrong, then he rebukes me so bad in front of people. So I like I feel what is wrong with this bishop? Oh, what, what, what? Then I keep on when I see him when he's preaching, I don't even listen to him, for example. So mm -hmm. you try to imagine if you don't forgive him, and in the real sense, he was just correcting you. Anyway, let me take it the other way around. Remember. If the Lord does not forgive you, which heaven are you going to? You're wasting your time in this ministry. You are crying every day. You are following services. You know, you are trying mm. at the workplace. Those who are studying still or furthering studies, you are trying not to do anything. But then, because you didn't forgive somebody that day, you are denied the chance for entry into the kingdom of God. So sometimes you really need to take it with that gravity. Or in uh, yes, when it comes to everything else, and especially. When you want to get, I mean, when you're in marriage and then, even if you're not, mm -hmm. yes, because you can be wrong in so many ways. So mm -hmm. just forgive anyway. I know it hurts, but just remember eternity. When you remember eternity, you say, God, let me let it go. Like Christ was part of in his face. So many things. Amen. Amen. Uh, on that, uh, Susan Buga says, you must forgive to be forgiven. If you wrong your partner, admit it. And plead for forgiveness. Forgiveness is endless, definitely. Forgiveness must be done generously and without end. If you, for, if you wrong your partner, admit it and plead for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, Lillian Becky says, what do you do if you ask someone for forgiveness and instead the person does not answer back? You get a silent treatment. What do you do? You still forgive. <laughs> Amen. Forgiveness is not because of the other person, what they are going to do, but because you, you know the value of forgiveness. Absolutely. This is your heart. Mm -hmm. So you are able to let go of anything that may have blocked you from, you know, mm. moving on. Forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is not even for the other person. It is more for yourself. That is a powerful revelation right there. 
forgiveness is for you. How do you change the background of the video? I'm trying. <laughs> You're using a phone. I'm using a tablet. Go to the arrow close to the video icon. I keep clicking on it and nothing is happening. Go to settings and choose virtual background. In my main page? Mm, I, don't know. I have not used the tablet in a long time. Okay. As you find it. I'm trying to change my background. <laughs> go to go to settings. All right. So forgiveness, very, very important. Let me share something. Okay, let me answer these questions and then I share something of forgiveness here. Um, if, what do you do if someone asks for forgiveness and they don't want your first responsibility? Your first responsibility as somebody who is in the wrong is to ask for forgiveness. You can never force anyone to forgive you. Mm -hmm. Right? You can never force anybody into forgiving you. So your part is to ask for forgiveness. Once you ask for forgiveness, then you are done. If they refuse, you have done your part. You have done your part and that is enough. And the Lord will not hold it against you because you have repented. Right? You have actually washed your hands. Yes, you have washed your hands and you are free. Yes. The other person, if they are holding things against you, then that is their responsibility. Right. And don't even think about preaching to them to, to forgive you. To say, you know, you must forgive me so that he, A, B, C, D. No, yours is to just say, I'm sorry for what I've done. Please forgive me. Finish. Don't give a sermon on why they must forgive. <laughs> right? That's not your part. Where did you say you'd put the virtual? I can't see it here. Really? Okay, let me, let me try. All right. So why do men find it hard to say sorry? Brothers, speak for yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> do you find it difficult to say sorry? Okay, let me, let me speak. Right. Uh, the, the, the main issue with brothers is um, humble, humility. Humility. Humbling oneself to, to admit that I'm in the wrong. But when you are in a relationship and you're having conflict, usually both parties think they are right. Both parties think they are right. And they defend their position with every ounce of strength in them. Unfortunately for the man, a pride gets the best of him. Pride gets the best of the man. So even when he's right, he finds a way to justify himself because he doesn't want to admit wrong lest he be, lest he comes out to, 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 to look like he's weak, lest he looks like he's a weak man. <laughs> so admitting that he's in the wrong is like weakness to him. So that's why most men don't want to admit wrong because it's about winning the argument. Mm -hmm. It's about winning the argument. Does that make sense? <laughs> so it is difficult to say I'm sorry because saying I'm sorry means I was wrong and that means, well, I didn't win the argument. That's the mindset. Okay? I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's what it means. Forgiveness is a strength because she shows you are capable of goodwill towards your partner. Uh -huh. It is a strength indeed. Who said this? Okay. Now, are you aware? Sen yes, yes, okay. Senior Bishop wanted to say something. Why do men find it hard to say sorry? Okay. Sometimes I think it's because they think they are the head of the house. <laughs> why should always say why should always say sorry first? As maybe as a sign of submissive or something. Some, some have that mindset, yes. Yes. Uh, they think the, the wife is the one who must. But then that's a wrong mentality. Yes. That's a wrong mentality. But yes, they think like that. They do think like that. Uh, are you aware that in the Bible, in the Bible, when the Lord gave 
the Israelites, the commandments. In all the commandments, there is, they were not commanded to forgive. Are you aware? Is somebody aware of that? <laughs> what do you find in the scriptures instead? You find they are saying, the soul that sins, it shall die. die. What do you find in the scriptures? It says, if a young man dishonors his parents, he must be stoned to death, isn't it? Do not suffer a witch to live. must kill him. If somebody uh, has a bull that goes, a bull that goes, that goes people, that bull must be killed. Or if that bull goes somebody and that person dies, then, you know, there must be restitution. They must pay a life for a life. He says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If somebody knocks your tooth out, you must also knock their tooth out. If somebody plugs your eye out, then you must also plug out their eye. Is somebody aware of that? <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Yes, please, Senior Bishop. That's why if you go to the book of Mark, is it what? Mark chapter 2. Shall we turn to Mark chapter 2? Mark chapter 2. Mm -hmm. You find that when the when the paralyzed man was brought to Jesus. I'll read it here. Okay. Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. Look at this. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. This is Mark chapter 2. I'm now reading verse 3. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, what did he say to the paralyzed man? Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, when the teachers, when some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man? Your sins are forgiven or to say get up take your mat and walk but i want you to know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins so he said to the man i tell you get up take your mat and go home he got up took his mat and walked out in full view of them all this amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Amen. Do you see that, blessed people? Why were the Pharisees puzzled, perplexed, and offended that Jesus forgave the paralyzed man? That's because, according to the law, the only way to get forgiveness is by sacrifice by giving a sacrifice of blood going into your uh, animals among your animals take out a goat take out a bull take out a goat or ram and slaughter it and then by the blood of that animal you offer your sacrifice and the lord will forgive your sins you see that that's how it worked in the old testament and so when jesus came preaching the gospel of the forgiveness of sins <laughs> when he would say to somebody I forgive you your sins are forgiven you it was a shocker to everybody 
uh, to the Pharisees, to the teachers of the law, to those who interpreted the law of Moses, because it was not usual. They lived in animosity against one another. They would stone each other if they were not happy with each other. Yeah. Uh, when the woman was caught in adultery, they picked up stones to throw at her, to stone her. And because that's, 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 that's what the law of Moses dictated unto them. So look at this. So when the, when, the, when the law was given, it was given with this command, the soul that sins, it shall die. To fulfill the scripture that says, the wages of sin are death. The wages of sin are death, is death, but the gift of life in Christ Jesus, uh, the gift, but, um, but the gift of God is life in Christ Jesus our Lord. All right? So forgiveness then is a huge privilege. It's not earned. It's not deserved. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me here? So forgiveness then <laughs> is undeserved. It is an act of mercy. It is an act of mercy because the other person does not have to do anything in the sense of to work for it, to deserve it, to earn it, to offer a sacrifice in order to earn that forgiveness. All right. Now, that's why now when we come into the New Testament, forgiveness of sin takes center stage. And it goes from just forgiveness of sins from the sins that we have sinned against the Lord to forgiving one another. Because when you go to John chapter 19, the Lord says to the disciples, if you forgive anyone their sins, they will be forgiven. That is now the power that the Lord has released unto us. And when you go to the book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 32, and then the Bible says, forgiving one another, even as Christ Jesus, as God through Christ Jesus has forgiven us from all our sins. Amen. Amen. All right. That is the privilege. That's why I like to call forgiveness the privilege of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a privilege. It is not deserved. It is a pure act of mercy and kindness. Right, so now coming to marriage, coming to marriage, no marriage can survive without forgiveness. No relationship can survive without forgiveness. Because in our brokenness, in our sinfulness, we are, very, we are pretty good at offending one another. We offend by words that we speak, by comments, by the tone of speech, yeah, by the choice of words. Sometimes you say innocent words. Innocent words, but then they are translated into hurt. They are translated. The other person receives them as if it's, uh, it's, uh, it's provocation. It's, it's as, if, as if they are being provoked uh, to anger by what you have said. And without forgiveness in our marriages, in our families, we will not go anywhere. There will be a lot of resentment. There'll be a lot of uh, separation and disunity. There'll be a lot of animosity. And, uh, and, and that's how the enemy sows discord again, between husband and, uh, and wife when you refuse to forgive one another. So, but then there are different ways of asking for that forgiveness, isn't it? What do you think is the right way to ask for forgiveness? Say you're sorry for what you have done. Uh -huh. But there are different ways that people receive forgiveness. So um, sometimes sorry is not enough. Sometimes saying what you're sorry for. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I'm sorry I treated you like this. It was mm -hmm. wrong of me. I should have known better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, sometimes the other person also wants you to say, I will not do it again. Okay. But sometimes even the way you come yeah. to present yourself, to ask for that forgiveness matters. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. It receives forgiveness different ways. So 
you some of them if you just say i'm sorry they'll accept it some of them you have to explain why you're sorry and the other one will want to see the actions that you are sorry along with your words mm -hmm. i so think generally yes. you must be humble regardless humble. whether you have to explain or not you mm -hmm. have to be humble when you ask for forgiveness that's maybe mm -hmm. that's your love language of how you receive your forgiveness not everybody <laughs> has that yeah well, like, like well, let me interject uh, senior bishop before you can yes. i please bless yes. senior bishop yes pastor okay. silas y yes like now you you, you can t maybe i think going down always when you're on the wrong you say like honey please i, I know i wronged you maybe after explaining and i, I promise i'll never do it again you know yeah like yeah in the way so that now promising kind of very powerful thank you over to you blessed senior bishop thank you humility amen yes who's that i was speaking make yes yes make i think the best way of asking for forgiveness is to confess what you, what somebody have done confess your wrongdoing yes that okay. actually is your love language there so basically <laughs> if your your forgiveness from somebody depicts what your your love or your forgiveness language is you know so some of them you can say i am sorry and they will accept it some of them they want you to not just say i'm sorry i'm like sorry for what i want detail <laughs> what, i think do you, know why, do you know why you are sorry you know do you know what you did that made me annoyed mm -hmm. I think confession is always the best way because even the Bible is telling us that whoever confesses their sin will be forgiven. Yes. Proverbs Bless 38, Bishop. verse 13. Mm -hmm. I have to you disagree have to with Pastor Kathleen. There is no right or wrong. Everybody receives... Um, okay. Uh, I'm Pastor, not saying you're wrong. Catherine I'm wants saying, to disagree. I mean, I'm Marjorie, saying, Sister Marjorie wants to disagree. Uh -huh. Yes. I have to disagree with Pastor Catherine. This is not about love language. Mm -hmm. Okay? When we go to the Bible, right, and we see that Jacob and Esau mm -hmm. had a thief, right? Mm -hmm. Because Joseph went, uh, um, Jacob went ahead and tricked the father to bless him instead of Esau, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We see in, in Genesis, um, Jacob, when he met with his brother after they had separated, mm -hmm. the Bible said he went ahead of himself and bowed his head to his brother mm -hmm. to make peace, mm -hmm. right? This has nothing yeah. to do with love language. Mm -hmm. My dear, love language does not mean it's a, a book. Love language is what you do on a daily I'm just day. quoting the Bible, not a book. Okay. 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 Now, I'm listen, saying. Listen, listen, <laughs> I don't know why you're <laughs> pushing me as if I'm saying love languages is some book. It is not a book. Love language is a way of life. <laughs> now, here's, here's, here. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, there are basic principles on forgiveness that apply to everybody. Everyone. Right? Yeah. Yes. Now, what uh, Pastor. Uh, Catherine is saying, uh, she what what she's saying is talking about uh, when you are in uh, in marriage in a relationship, and the different peculiarities in which different people receive apologies. Yeah, that uh, that for some people, when you approach uh, forgiveness, when you want to ask them for forgiveness, they expect particular they expect you to do to ask for forgiveness in a particular way for them to yeah. know that you have truly asked for forgiveness, uh, that you are truly sorry or remorseful for what you have, uh, for what you are ask, for what you have done, right? In any case, uh, uh, there are basic principles. Okay, there are basic principles. As we go to the book of Matthew chapter 18, that the first principle of asking for forgiveness is humility. It doesn't matter how you do it, whether you are, uh, talking about I'm sorry or you are saying I'm sorry I will not do it again or you are saying I'm sorry for, 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 for coming home late or you are saying whatever you want to say but it must be underpinned by humility. Yes. 
Yes, you must humble yourself. You must come down from a, your high house. You must yes. not try to, you must not try to defend yourself and justify yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So that is just the basic principle there, that if you don't do that, then there will continue to be friction in your relationship. Mm. Well, at least that's what happened to, to me. <laughs> I, I, I found it very difficult to, to confess to my wife in our first, uh, how many? Four years of our marriage? <laughs> years of our marriage. <laughs> because, because I thought I was in the right. Yeah? It is I, difficult to say, I'm sorry, you know? Yes. It's if a lot great. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think I needed to say I'm sorry if I was justified in what I was doing. I justified myself more than I asked for forgiveness. So sometimes I would say, I'm sorry if what I did hurt you, right? <laughs> so it doesn't matter mm. who you are talking to. That is just wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what I used to do. I'm sorry if what I said uh, offended you, but that's, I didn't want to offend you. <laughs> that's what that's... most people do. I have... <laughs> like, I'm not yeah. kidding there <laughs> so we must stop justifying what we have done no explanation no need to explain yourself <laughs> don't say oh yeah. so i was late that's why i'm uh, I'm, I'm late that's why i did abcd no just say i am sorry finish <laughs> oh, <stop. laughs> right? or forgive me just humble yourself and say you know what i've done was wrong however you yeah. do it humble yourself humble yourself humble yourself and ask for forgiveness stop justifying yourself and take responsibility hmm. Take the responsibility and own up your mistakes that you have done wrong. Some people say, yeah, I'm sorry, but if you had not spoken to me like that, I would not have bursted out in anger. <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that's not being sorry. That's not, for, that's not being sorry. Yes. Yeah. You're not asking for forgiveness. You're just justifying yourself even more. Or, I'm sorry, but you know, it's my parents. It's the way I was raised up. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't cut it. <laughs> now you're blaming so your parents. Take responsibility for what you've done. Yeah? Just take responsibility. And the, mm. the explanations will be reserved for later. Yeah. So first step, humble. Recognize be that humble. you have done wrong. Yeah? Whether you have uh, uh, falsely accused your spouse or you have used up the money that you should not have used up, or um, you have said words that you should not have said, just say, I'm sorry. Whether you say, I'm sorry, or you say, I will not do it again, or you say what, as long as you own your mistake, confess your wrongdoing, mm. and acknowledge that you have done wrong. That, that is very, very important. Indeed, there are peculiarities. When you are with your spouse, when you're with your wife, when you're with your husband, they... Uh, uh, indeed, they, 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 they have peculiarities because of the way they grew up. Uh, for some people, the way they grew up, maybe with their parents, all they needed to say is, I'm sorry. And therefore, them growing up, they think if someone says, I'm sorry, then they are truly sorry. Yeah. You just accept it. You don't have to fight with that. You don't have to ask further, sorry for what? Some people, they will press you, sorry for what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Well, you know, I know what. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> it's so true. Yes. Some people, they're like that because of the, yeah. the, the, the way they were brought up. Who's or when you do something wrong, you'll be told, say sorry. Mm -hmm. when you're kid, you know? Yes. Say sorry. They say, okay, I'm sorry, but they don't really want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so they grow up doing that. They grow up with that habit, thinking that that's all you need to do to say, oh, sorry. Yeah. And so I all... think. Uh -huh. Yes, Sister Meke. I think, I think uh, self justification brings quarrelsome. <laughs> Definitely. Of course. Imagine. It's better a... just to say, I'm sorry, then you stop there. Imagine a drunkard just uh, did. Uh, let's not not just a drunkard, just a, just a stranger. Yeah, stepped on your toes, and then mm. walks away. Looks at you and then walks away, and then looks at you and then. Walks. 
just ignore you're just like okay <laughs> and, and they you, this thing of uh, this uh, a statement that says don't don't uh, keep quiet when you are angry don't say a word when you're angry i think it's better to just say i'm sorry then you keep quiet from there why is it so why do they say don't speak when you're angry <laughs> you may say something you may regret definitely in anger anger will explode yes and exp because you're angry you want to hurt the other person just as much mm -hmm. so you want to use something that will hurt them in your in your words yeah you are boiling up boiling mm -hmm. where that, is aki and um overseer jacob but we are not hearing their inputs <laughs> let's see are they still around <laughs> Where are they? Pastor Silas is here, Fain, Naomi. Maybe they have, they have deserted us. They left. <laughs> yes, they left us a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yes, what were we saying before this? I lost track of the words. Yeah, we were asking why it's, it's hard to, why it's not good to um to respond to when someone you're angry. when you're angry yeah yeah you 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 boil up you are boiling when when my wife and i would have uh, conflicts i realized that um when i'm when i was angry and i was speaking i said very hurtful stuff like literally <laughs> you know this <laughs> bishop of yours i was saying very very hurtful things and, and I came across as if I was somebody who didn't care what she was feeling. That's why you should never speak. You should always zip your mouth. Zip it. Just zip it and give yourself some time to think about it. Mm. Think about your words. Process your words. Because when you speak in that moment, there will be dangerous bazookas coming out of your mouth. You just walk out if you need to or go yes. and sit down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep your mouth shut and walk out. Find a, a quiet place to think over what you want to say. Mm. Walking think over out, it. is it right to walk out of your partner like that? If you had no. Hand? You need to, to say, I need time out. You need to negotiate and say, I need time out. <laughs> you don't bang the door. You don't storm out. You don't uh, fume out. No, you say, I'm sorry, I need some time. I cannot, um, uh, I cannot continue this conversation now. Mm -hmm. You need to say that. I need some time to think about what I need to say before I say something hurtful. Yes, and, and, and most of the time we all do. Most of the time we all do. Mm. Because the way uh, we... Uh, our flesh, our flesh is easily provoked. We are not slow to anger. We are not like the Lord. The Lord is slow to anger. Eh? We are not slow to anger. When somebody hurts you, you, you want to fight back because of our adrenaline. You yes, you react immediately. <laughs> yes. We want to hurt them even more. Yes. No, it's a skill that you can actually acquire with mm -hmm. the help of the Lord. Like Definitely. I have found like somebody will really trigger you and you feel like like first of all i actually take a pause and i'm like are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> i'm like this this is just a joke <laughs> what what uh, what has helped me uh, before marriage is the scripture in the book of proverbs 18 that says even a fool when he's quiet is considered to be wise <laughs> hmm. yeah. yes even a fool the, the, the worst of fools. If he's just quiet there, you'll not know that this is a fool. You'll think he's a very wise man because. <laughs> and blessed Bishop, there is a, a scripture as well that says, um, be quick to hear and slow to speak. That's it in the book of James. Mm -hmm. Slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to get angry. That's it. It's a classic. Uh, <clears throat> advice that transcends the test of time and mm. it works all the time it does when you're in a conflict sometimes you you, you become sarcastic also yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
somebody is guilty of sarcasm here like me. <laughs> <laughs> I become sarcastic. And you know, and you begin to speak in parables and you begin to say things that, uh, and every next word is just more hurtful than the previous one. <laughs> 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 and when you find now both couples because you are both trying to defend your integrity and your territory you both become sarcastic and um, you, you reach a deadlock because each one's sarcasm is neutralizing the other <laughs> and, <laughs> and, the, and the wife is trying to outdo the other yeah, the husband's sarcasm and the husband is trying to outdo the wife's sarcasm and then uh, even more resentment because if your sarcasm is outdone you become <laughs> resentful <laughs> I'm like, forget it, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why it's always good to be slow to speak and quick to listen and quick to get, uh, to, to get, I mean, slow to get angry and ask questions, learn to ask questions. Learn to ask questions. But at that moment, I don't even think you'll be wanting to ask any questions. You are just fuming. You might as well just take a chill. Yes, feel yes. break and just I'm like okay can we just right now I'll explode let me just take a break <laughs> questions comes later because you see yourself boiling and you're like Whoo, let me let me step out right now you know it's so easy to go quiet on a stranger yeah when a stranger yeah. provokes you it's easy to keep quiet and just ignore him and walk away yeah but in, when you are with your spouse, it's totally different. It's different. <laughs> it's different. Your, your, your inclination is to respond. Because you have a high, um, what's, what's the word? What, uh, what is the word? In, in fact, ignoring is not an option because if you ignore, it comes out as, a, as an insult. You have and a higher expectation for your spouse than, you know, a stranger. The, Self-control. Self-control. You need more self-control. That's it. In yeah. marriage. Then when and to avoid the things. overreaction. Yes. Not just overreaction, <laughs> assumptions too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being too liberal in your assumptions. <laughs> but you know, I are saying it's practice because it's easier said than done. No, oh, definitely. It took me four mm -hmm. years. It took me four years. <laughs> Took me four years to finally learn to take responsibility <clears throat> and stop my sarcasm. I'm, I'm sure <clears throat> you guys will not take that long. Yeah. I think by joining the ministry, the Holy Spirit begins to deal with you. <laughs> if you did something <clears throat> wrong, to go back and say sorry. So it kind of helps you um, master in how to apologize. <laughs> And here's the one very important thing. We need to learn to be broken, to be humbled by the Lord. We need yeah. to be broken, <clears throat> spiritually broken. If your spirit is not spiritually broken, uh, you will have a difficult time with pride in marriage. And you'll have a difficult time forgiving one another. <clears throat> and a difficult time listening to one another. And uh, that's why even right now, before you get married, before you are married, before you're in a relationship, already begin to ask the Lord to break you, to mold you, to humble you, to humble your spirit, really humble you, both brothers and sisters, to really humble us. And you're not, you don't really realize the level of humility you need until you get married. And so really begin to cry for yourself now. Oh Lord, please forgive me all my pride. All my pride, you know, each and every one of us is proud to a degree. The Lord must break that pride. Amen. The Lord must break it. If we are to find true forgiveness, to be quick to forgive, quick to listen, slow to get angry. The Lord has to break us and crush and mold and submit our will. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful. Forgiveness, very, very important. Um, that's why uh, when you get married, the issue, one of the topics 
that will always come up over and over again is conflict resolution. Conflict mm -hmm. resolution. <clears throat> you must take this lesson and keep it at the front of your mind, wherever you keep it. Should the Messiah tell you that long and you get married, you, 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 you will need to keep drawing from this lesson. Forgiveness. 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 You need to learn to forgive. You know, my wife has been so quick to forgive and so quick to apologize. Who's that? With having echo. Yeah. She has been so quick to apologize. I've learned a lot from her. Um, <laughs> played a role to break my proud heart. This proud heart of mine. I didn't want to ask for forgiveness. <clears throat> Amen. Anybody with a question as we round down? Did we cover everything? No. There is differences in marriage. Okay, we can try 15 minutes. Differences in marriage. Wait, wait because of that, mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Sorry. Yes, Joseph Joel Mohanga. Welcome. Thank you. I've been invited by um, Silas. <laughs> yes. Are you the one from the USA? Yeah. Welcome, please. Where are you joining us in the US? Uh, where I am right now? Yeah. Okay, um, in Fayetteville, Arkansas, in Arkansas, Arkansas State. South, um, South East. East. I'm a student. I'm, I'm, I'm a student at University of Arkansas. I'm doing Wonderful. a PhD in chemistry. Wow. Hey, chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. It's good to have well, you joining us from Arkansas. Yeah, but I'm a Kenyan. Um, <laughs> I'm not an American. Aim. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, this is a very wonderful program. And I, 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 I've been missing a lot. I, I'm so happy to have gotten here. There You're is welcome. a question. Yes. Thank you so much. There's a question um, you had just written towards the end of uh, that. That's what I thought, perhaps. Okay, of course, you've given your example, mm -hmm. but then. Oh, yeah. But then I, I, I think you've just given your example, but you've not talked about like what should be done really. Because okay. one of our, our partner who, who is gets himself repeating the same, the same thing. Um, and then you said we are not God. <laughs> you know, it's only God who can be able to forgive us a thousand times. And, you know, like if you're doing the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I remember. I, I actually, I didn't touch on this at all. Uh, I didn't touch on this at all. Um, well, I used to think, uh, you know, this was one of my accusations against my wife <laughs> when we first got married. I thought she was just doing the same thing over and over, even though she was asking for forgiveness. Right? Right. But, uh, but uh... who is that with an echo? <laughs> right. So what of the, the spouse who does the same thing over and over again? Okay, look, number one, there is your perspective and then there is their perspective. Mm. You think they are doing, they are, they are deliberately doing the same things over and over and over again. That's what you think. And that's an assumption. That's your mm. assumption, your best explanation that they're just doing the same things even though they're asking forgiveness. And what is their point of view? So the first thing is to find out from them when I would speak to my wife, she would tell me, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I didn't do it on purpose. But I would say, but this is the same thing you asked for forgiveness last time. Oh, and the other time. <laughs> <laughs> that was my point of view. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what Pastor uh, uh, Catherine said is now what helps us in this situation about different people's love languages. That for some people, to say you are sorry and you are asking for forgiveness, to ask for forgiveness uh, and saying you are sorry must be accompany, accompanied by uh, either restitution or an act, a sort of act to make, to, to give a clear indication that yes, I am truly sorry for what I've done. And I'm changing my ways. I'm 
you know i'm doing things differently now mm-hmm. and and then i realize i'm i'm one such person but that's not because but then that that, that having a, such a mindset or such a make up of wanting people to uh, uh, to change their ways Oh, yeah, sorry. It does not mean that when the other person does the same thing over and over again, they have not asked for forgiveness. They have not meant it when they ask for forgiveness. Mm. It does not mean the person did not mean it. It's just, perhaps it's just you who needs to change your perspective. On how you receive. <laughs> yes, on how you receive the forgiveness and actually being willing to forgive every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it's only when I change my perspective Number one, when I learned to take responsibility every time my wife and I had a conflict. Because when we would have our conflicts, I was, I was sure I didn't do anything wrong. I was sure. I was 100% sure that I, I, did not, I was not to blame for anything and she needed to ask for forgiveness. But then I didn't like it that she was asking for forgiveness so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> because it didn't sound so genuine to me. I wanted yeah. to discuss it. I wanted to discuss it and reason over it. <laughs> I want and, to probe it. I want. Yes, I want her to understand that. my point of view so yeah. that then she can say, oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you see that? So it was not, the problem was not her. The problem was me my, and my perspective. Yeah. There is a difference between somebody doing the same thing over and over again deliberately and doing it on purpose to hurt you, to provoke you. And then somebody uh, seemingly doing the same thing over and over again, but not because they're trying to provoke you, but probably you are just so easily provoked. And because you have not yet moved over from the past issue, so you, ju- you are just mm. making your, you're connecting your dots. You're just connecting your dots there. Ah, like, oh, this person. Yeah. <laughs> really trying to test my patience. <laughs> yeah. But here is the thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me Isn't finish with this. Yeah, I'll finish with this. Just, just okay. give me a second. Okay. I'll finish okay. with this. Here's a principle that we say in marriage counseling. Number one, change begins with you. It does not begin with the other person. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm waiting for my wife to change, so that I can begin to truly forgive her and really begin to feel like, yes, she has changed, then I'm deceiving myself. If I want to see a change over this issue, I must begin to take responsibility for my part. What have I done? What have I contributed that has led to the issue that we're we're having a conflict over, which makes me feel like she has not really repented from the previous issue, yeah? Take responsibility, and then how can I change? See the way in which I can change. When I begin to learn that, that I need to change, I must change, I must focus on myself. Focus on how I can change, rather than focusing on how my wife must change. (laughs) Things change totally. When I begin to learn that, things change dramatically, really change dramatically. And I've never had to complain ever again that my wife was doing the same thing over and over again because my perspective yeah. changed. I took responsibility. I decided to change rather than waiting for her to change. Amen. All right. Uh, Brother Joseph and Pastor Silas, you wanted to say something? Y- yes. Yeah. Be- before before um, my friend here, Joel, comes on board, I bless the Lord that today, I know he's going to be added in the group, Senior Bishop, I will send the number. Amen. And so... I'm really glad that he's here and he's going to learn a lot uh, concerning this thing so that now when we one day get into that side, <laughs> we will not be fighting our wives anyway. <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. You are most welcome, please, Pastor Silas. I'm checking to see if you have sent me the number. I don't see it here. All right. Yes, please, Brother Joseph. Okay. Thank you so much. I prefer being called Joel because... My uh-huh. size is, I'm a short guy. So Joseph seems to be for, for tall people. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I would say I'm, I'm very grateful that you've addressed um, 
you've addressed what I, I had asked mm -hmm. very elaborately. And that aspect of connecting dots, I just wanted to tell you here, we call it uh, trying to do some thesis in your mind. <laughs> You're connecting dots, you know, like, okay, He's doing this, so yeah. he's meaning this. So he's yeah, so you're, yeah, you're, yeah. You're developing a thesis in your mind every other time. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Taking your hypothesis, proving yeah. it right. Yes, and forming your arguments. <laughs> yeah, but I'm so grateful. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. Amen. You are most welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us. Uh, mm. We shall add you to the WhatsApp group. Yes, it's the Pastor Kathy. Also, the way you said that, okay, you adjusted yourself, but I think also you have to also explain to your spouse um, how you receive the apology. the apology, you know, because even as you are getting to understand them, they also have to get the opportunity to understand you. Um, so, for example, when you, when they do something wrong, tell them sorry is not sufficient. <laughs> um, when you say sorry. Me, I want a brief explanation of why you're sorry. And maybe tell me also that you are not going to do it again, you know? So at least they learn you at the same time rather than just, um, I'm, I'm very sorry. And that's it. That uh, indeed does, does have a place. There is a place we need to discuss, yes. Uh, from the practical point of view, uh, of course, should I let me say this? Before we got married, we had we had this sort of discussion that <laughs> what is the best way to ask for forgiveness? Yeah, mm -hmm. we we had discussed over this very well, but when we got married, it all flew out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> there was no time to think about that, <laughs> to think about oh, this is how I should ask for forgiveness for, for her to really know that I'm, I'm truly uh, sorry for what I've done. Or, but I mean, within that and, argument, when you're now coming to reconcile, you can say to them, this is how I feel that you're being genuinely sorry yeah, for. When, when, when the dust settles down, yeah. when the dust settles down and you have had your time out, yes, uh, and you're coming together now to resolve your conflict, indeed, yeah. as I was saying before, it's a time to ask questions. It's a time to ask questions. And it's also a time uh, uh, to, to make things right, to make things clear. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the first, the first, first step is to say, I'm sorry. No, no, no strings, are, nothing else. Nothing like, oh, it's because of, it's because of, no, no, no. Just, just apologize. Just ask for forgiveness. Finish. Mm. Yeah. And then, when everybody is calmed down, then the explanations can come later. And maybe you can add some things. You can be like, I want to see some tears to know you are sorry. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's going overboard now. <laughs> yeah. So indeed, indeed, there is room. There is room for, for, for discussing, um, uh, for setting the stage of, okay, probably next time, uh, uh, this is how you should say, I'm sorry. It, it, you, you may, you, yes, you may have the opportunity to say that, but I'll tell you that the, uh, the, 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 the most practical way to see transformation, to ensure that um, you, even you yourself, you, you find it easy to forgive your spouse, take responsibility and, uh, and see how you can change and not just focus on how your spouse has to, don't focus on your spouse. The moment you take the focus, your, your binoculars, <laughs> because we, your, your microscope, not even binoculars, your microscope. <laughs> you take your microscope, you turn it towards yourself. Mm. You'll change. You'll see massive transformation in your relationship. I'm telling you. Because you'll not worry too much about how she says, I'm sorry. Those, they are, those things are important, yes, especially when you are not uh, really married. But when you get married uh, and you really want to see massive, massive improvement in how you communicate, then 
focus on yourself. Turn your lens to yourself and look at this broken human being that you are and see how you can change, how you can transform, how God can help you. Not your spouse. Forget about your spouse. Just forget totally. <laughs> and, and look at yourself and say, aha, oh, I see. No wonder. Okay, so this is what I've been doing. This is how I have contributed. This is, all right, I see. So my wife has been angry at me because this is what I've done. This is what I've said. This is how I've responded to her. I've been demanding this of her and it's not practical. I see. All right. Now I know how to change. Because the moment you begin to change, it reciprocates. Your, your spouse automatically also begins to reciprocate the, the, the transformation, especially when the man takes the lead. When the husband begins to take responsibility and focus on himself and how he will change, usually the wife follows very easily. <laughs> I have seen. Amen. All right. Amen, Senior Bishop. I'm not diminishing the effort of ladies to, to lead, their, I mean, to, to have an influence on their husbands. You can do that too. The moment you focus on yourself as the, as the wife, as the spouse, as the wife in that marriage, uh, your husband too will see the good example you are, you are leading and uh, he will have no choice but to also re reciprocate. As, as Archbishop Makengo was, was telling us the other time, uh, on Wednesday, that when he realized that all he needed to do is just go before his wife and cry, I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah? Forget about what the wife has done. Just, oh, I'm this wicked human being, you know, please forgive me. Well, the moment he begins to focus on himself, and then the wife also would break down and say, oh, no, 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 it's not you. It's me. I'm really sorry. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> Because when you begin to humble yourself and break down and really focus on yourself, it opens the door. It opens the other person's heart in a way that demanding them, them to change will never be able to do. Demanding that the person change will never achieve much. But when you focus on yourself and then you humble yourself, you break down and, and, and you focus on your own change, your spouse will follow suit. Mm. Yes, Sister Meke. Amen, Senior Bishop. Mm -hmm. I think the best way to forgive is to forget what your, your, your spouse has done, has done to you. You don't need to remind them of what they've done last time mm -hmm. or what they've done to you because mm -hmm. that, will make you, that will make you think that that person is doing it continuously. Yeah. Meaning we must all forgive and forget what, what was done to you last time. Definitely. Uh, not, not, do not bring up things of the past. Exactly. Uh, that is a very important one too. If you didn't want your past being brought, then you don't bring the other. <laughs> yes, definitely. I know it's a big struggle, but we can do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so easy to just be like, you did this last time. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing this one. So how can I trust you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and, that. and remembering that we are custodians. You see, in, in marriage, we are supposed to mirror Christ. So it, when you speak to your spouse like that, you do, you do that. It's like asking Christ also to do the same audit with you. Mm -hmm. Imagine if God was to, to take audit with you like that. <laughs> Reminding you of your sins that you've done in the past. Yes. Yes. Then you are in trouble, yeah? <laughs> That's what Joseph uh, David said. Lord, if you are to remember, if to bring to account all our sins, then who will survive? Mm -hmm. Who will stand? Mm -hmm. Who will remain? No one. No one. Nobody. <laughs> Amen. No one. Hallelujah. Very true. All right. We have come to the end of this session here. We Sorry, we couldn't handle the differences in marriage. We'll handle that next time. Um, Thanks. Differences in marriage, we'll handle that next time. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. We have, uh, uh, should I call you Professor Joel? Or Dr. Joel? Which one? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> or Who Brother Joel? Which one? 
Okay, I just prefer being called Joel, but most you'll hear most people call me what you just said, prof. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they, I, I, I also teach um, first degree students um, uh -huh. here and they, 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 they refer to me that way. So, <laughs> so Wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us, professor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's You're coming. almost it's just, there. You're almost yeah. there. Yeah. Yes. We'll, and we'll, then I would love, to, I would love to teach too at the university. So indeed, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I must a, say, uh -huh. yes. Before be, 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 before you sum up, I must say that I'm very very grateful. Yes. Um, uh, even for your humility and for allowing me to join um this meeting today. And now mm -hmm. that I've known that it's always at such a time, it's actually mm -hmm. nine. It's ten uh -huh. a.m. This side. Uh, on uh -huh. Saturday. <laughs> All right. Oh, 10 a.m. I see. Okay. Yeah. So it would be very easy for me to be joining because uh, on mm -hmm. Saturdays before 10, our library is open at 10. So uh -huh. I'd be able to join before now. Oh, good. And then um, I've always wanted to, you know, get more information about this because mm -hmm. uh, you guys, they um our the, the priesthood i've always told that it's important to get this information before we get there definitely so that so that we we we, we don't uh we, we we know how to handle the mystics <laughs> that, that are always there. yes yeah. yes <laughs> and then um i would say that i'm born again mm -hmm. <laughs> and i'm a, a member of the Ministry of Repentance and Holiness. So while in Amen. Kenya, I fellowship at Nairobi Main Altar. Amen. Wow, yeah. amazing. Yeah. We are blessed to, to have you from Nairobi joining us. <laughs> Nairobi, Thank you. Are you, were you under uh, Deputy Archbishop Major. Moses Tangara or Major? Yeah, Major General. Amen. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a privilege for us to have you. Thank you so much. Amen. I'll, so much. I'll be joining every Amen. other time. You have also yes. talked about Wednesday. Uh, it was actually Thursday. Every Thursday, there is a discipleship with Archbishop Dr. Makengo. I, I would love to, because I know he's a prayer warrior, and I would really yes. love to be discipled by him. <laughs> yes, Thursdays <laughs> on, on Zoom as well. Mm -hmm. uh, discipleship with Archbishop Dr. Makengo. Professor Makengo, and uh, and then our next meeting will be on the twenty fourth. Did I say March? March, somebody, please. Uh, somebody, you please. are going uh, back. I'm telling you, please correct me. Yes, twenty fourth of April. Let me see. Is it twenty fourth? Yes, twenty fourth of April. That's our next fellowship. Great. So we'll share the the the, the, the link on our WhatsApp group for the next discipleship with Archbishop Maikengo. Yeah? Amen. Great. Hi, Blessed Bishop. Hi, Sister Abby. Sorry, um, we're late. <laughs> are you in Boston or Massachusetts? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Massachusetts. Massachusetts. <laughs> for the moment. You're in a very posh area of the USA. Yeah, Great. I'm in there for the moment. You are welcome. It's good to have you joining us today. Dennis okay. Lemuel. Thank you for joining us. Where are you joining us from? Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Senior Bishop. My name is Dennis. Amen. I am personally in Malta. Wonderful. And I'm glad to join you this evening. Thank you so you much. Me? Yes. You said you're joining us from Nairobi Main Altar. You're from Nairobi Main Altar, right? Yes. Amazing. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are blessed to have you joining us today. We have a lot of people. Do you have many people from Nairobi Main Altar today? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm I, privileged to join you. Amen. I think you were yes. invited by Pastor Silas. Eh? Yeah, Silas. Pastor Silas invited me. Yes. Although I joined in the later, 
Yes, we are blessed to have you. You are welcome to join us next time, 24th of April. Thank you. On Saturday, yes. Eiffel, are you still there? Well, yes, Eiffel is here. Yes, welcome. Yeah. I hope you are doing well. We missed your voice today. Uh, I was late. I was a bit late. Yes. Uh, yeah, but I think the Lord that I, I good to hear um, part of it here. Yeah. Amen. Almost one hour. Great. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you for making time. Thank you for making time. Amen. As, uh, as uh, Professor was saying, indeed it's very important that we have these sort of discussions before marriage because um, look, we spend nearly uh, 13 years studying in order to have a job that we can have for 15 years, 20 years, I don't know. But no amount of job can ever equal to uh, marriage. No amount of job can ever parallel the calling that we have in marriage. And so absolutely, it pays a lot. My wife and I have benefited a lot from premarital counseling, from digging in deeper before we got married. And I'm sure this, uh, I hope, I hope you guys are learning a lot. You find this very valuable, as I know you are. And, uh, and if you uh, follow this, I'm sure the Lord is going to help you a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really heartbreaking that in, in the church, <clears throat> families are breaking down left, right, and center. Like, mm -hmm. is it like bees or like flies? I don't know which one. <clears throat> But we are the custodians now. The Lord is raising us to prove Genesis chapter 2 right. That it is true and it is possible. A man shall leave his father and mother and unite his wife. And the two shall become one and bring glory unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. It's very much possible. We can do it. Doesn't matter what we see in the news, on TV, wherever we read the news. The Lord will make us the difference. Amen. So, Abby, thank you so much for joining us. Ash, Eiffel, Esther Blessing, you're just joining us now when we are finishing. Uh, Professor Joel, Justina, Lillian, Becky, Marjorie, Martha, Naomi, Fane, Brother Sanil, Pastor Silas, thank you so much for uh, for participating in our fellowship today. Amen. So next time, <clears throat> we'll deal with uh, the last topic we did not handle today, differences in marriage, and then also pitfalls to avoid. Okay. Anybody with a, with a, with, with a suggestion of a topic to handle next time? Just one more, one more topic. pitfalls to avoid. Anybody with a suggestion of a topic? Um, uh, Mr. Senior Bishop, um, yeah. what, do you, what, what do you mean by differences in marriage? Sorry? Uh, um, what do you imply by differences in marriage? Differences between men and women. The differences, um, yeah, the differences, okay. which includes uh, the different ways of our behavior, different ways of uh, of, oh, okay. of thinking, yeah. so many ways, so many ways, differences in marriage. Yeah. Differences in marriage around which we spend quite a lot of time in marriage trying to reconcile. The reason for which we have a lot of conflicts and the reason for which we also enjoy our unique, our differences. <laughs> the, way, the reason for which we also have joy in marriage. Yeah? Differences. Our differences. 
Okay, anybody with one more topic to suggest? Or shall we ha <clears throat> shall we only handle these two next time? Even for the praise meeting the, afterwards. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Bishop. Amen. Yeah, I was suggesting if we can handle about the differences in finances. Uh, differences in finances. Okay, today we were handling the topic of finance. Mm, okay. Okay. Let's say... Yeah. Okay, differences in finance. Finance and career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. I didn't write that correct, did I? Okay. Good. But is that not really like what you are the one who chooses? <laughs> Based on who you... <laughs> Okay, from my point of view, mm -hmm. now that you've identified that I want to get married to so and so, the differences in your career, maybe how different careers you, affect marriage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how different careers affect marriage actually. Mm -hmm. And you know, in career, in career, therein we also have issues to do with the finances and all that. Mm -hmm. So how does that affect marriage? How does it make marriage good? How can it be a challenge to marriage? Such. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one of, we're we not going to discuss this yet, yet, yeah, but I think one of the very good setup is to have someone at home and someone working. <laughs> children, children need to grow up with their parents all right we're not all going right, to start really now sure. we are not going to start now going deep into this one but yes next <laughs> time yes thank you so much brother dennis yeah that's a very important Amen. issue i know that uh, in medicine they always say don't marry a fellow doctor don't marry a fellow doctor okay <laughs> seriously <laughs> seriously <laughs> senior bishop let me senior bishop yeah let me ask you a question here. One day, a friend of mine, I, like, like you know, I'm not going to disclose here, but somebody was asking me whether actually somebody who has done something like uh, finance or any other course apart from medicine, mm -hmm. that if you want to marry a doctor, <laughs> yeah. you must study to PhD. I mean, until you obtain the title of doctorship, so that now you guys rhyme in the house, which I think will not be the case. I really, I was really against it, really, because it's God who gives, really. But then that guy has got that notion in mind until his mind uh, is set up and he cannot do anything like that. And if he, has, he must do it, he has to study up to PhD level to obtain that title. So yeah. he wants, he wants to marry a doctor, or he wants to be called a doctor. Which one? Uh, like now, you want mm -hmm. to uh, marry a doctor, but he's saying, okay, he was giving an example. Mm -hmm. The guy is a doctor that if, if, she, if, if he has to marry a lady, that lady, if she's not a doctor, she has to study until the level of Oh, PhD. I see. I see. So, and he, yeah. is he having a PhD himself? No, him is just a doctor. A, uh, mean, a he's just doctor. a medical doctor. A medical doctor, yeah. <laughs> Now the, key, there are differences. the key thing was the key thing was the, the, the name doctor. So like all of them must be doctors. Yeah. I see. So he wants to marry for the sake of st status. I see. Yes, yes. So for him, the most important thing is status. Ah, he's not ready to marry. <laughs> I agree with you, senior bishop. <laughs> yeah, he's not ready to marry. <laughs> if he marries, there will be trouble. It doesn't matter whether he marries. Them. Around. If yeah. they bring around 10 women all with the title of doctor, who yeah. will he choose? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, this thing is God giving. Just pray the Lord bring for you, mm. connect you with your rib. Yes. And then things will just work out. It doesn't matter. Maybe sometimes, but then you find situations and do they do happen nowadays. So many situations that you find a woman, a woman is earning more than a man. Like, <laughs> and then... Now, uh, <laughs> when you become a doctor, it is true, you're 
you become very, not just when you become a doctor, even when you study up to PhD there, master's, PhD, you become a very, uh, um, your, your thought process become in a, in a way patent in a particular way. You become very intellectual. You begin to, to want to have intellectual arguments, intellectual discussions, yeah? Mm, and you have a rational religion. approach to different things. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. It affects the way you handle different things. And, yes. and, and, uh, and if you are not careful, you may, uh -huh. your husband, who is, who is a medical doctor or just a PhD or master's, whatever you, intellectual, uh, whatever your vocation is that requires a high level of intellect, uh, you will find yourself demanding of your wife to reason with you on that level. On that same level, you would want to, to, to your wife to be, uh, to, be, to be discussing with you on that same level, yeah? Yes. But it doesn't have to be. Yeah, you just need to learn to humble yourself and, uh, and speak to your wife in plain English. <laughs> or have your wife, yeah. It, it, you, you don't necessarily need a woman who is intellectually uh, on the same level with you on the same intellectual level, because you can have a woman or a husband with the same intellectual qualification as you, whatever you mm -hmm. call it, and that marriage will be just full of intellectual arguments because, because you are both highly educated and you are both now full of pride and you may find it difficult to even compromise, even to understand one another because Every time the wife says something, the husband must always counter because you know it's an intellectual house. When the husband says something, the wife tries to counter. So it's not always a positive thing <laughs> to marry somebody with the same intellectual caliber as you are. It doesn't have to be like that. It's not a written, an, an, an unspoken rule that it, you must marry somebody with the same intellect as you or with the same qualification as you. It doesn't have to be. Um, if you want to, then you must also be ready for the challenges that come with it. Challenges. Yeah, very, very true, Senior Bishop. Yes. But as we said last time, the most important thing is a woman that God brings to you or the husband that God brings to you. If you are focusing on status and intellect, then you may as well not marry because that marriage will be in trouble. It will be in deep trouble unless both of you are broken seriously so that that doctor title will mean nothing anymore. All right. Thank you so much. Anybody wants to say one more thing before I close down? Before we close down? Before we shut down our, uh, our fellowship? My final remark, um, Bishop, I really want to appreciate you for your time for really sparing some time to have having come and dis, discuss with us and teach us that you may grow in, into the fear of the lord in the fear of the lord Amen. because uh, the marriage that we aspire to enter to should jesus study to come should mm. help us gear us toward the entry of the messiah because mm -hmm. they only say um what i know what i know that your partner should help you that God's purpose may be achieved in you. Like if you marry and you're a brother, you grow into a leader. You also mm -hmm. lead other people. Maybe if you you are um, you go to, you grow into pastorship, what what like now our bishop is a bishop. You know, I mean it doesn't matter all these titles. Titles doesn't matter. But what what I'm trying to say, like they help you to grow spiritually another level that you may attain the the nature of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you so much for teaching us. For me personally, I've learned a lot. Amen. And I believe people that have joined late, like, like uh, Pastor Salia, uh, Esther Blessings, and the rest will, will follow up like I missed the other time. With so please, <laughs> we're going to finish <laughs> that we come early. Uh, and, uh, I really appreciate you so much, Senior Bishop. And mm -hmm. ever since you started teaching us, ever since I came on board, I've really learned a lot. And uh, my reasoning capacity has been really different and I bless the Lord to having certain handle, handling things in a mature level that I may also help others as a priest 
So thank you indeed. That is my final remarks. Is Amen. now. Thank Amen. You so much. And people like Catherine should send us goodies from uh, Ireland. <laughs> the rest, anyway. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, Senior Bishop, before before you close it down. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to, but I think this one you should include it in the next in the next session. Okay. This discussion. Okay. Uh, discussion about this topic of uh, what it means, ma what, what maturity means in regards to marriage, such okay. that if you are referring me to a mature man, because you know, I can be old, older than the younger people, but then when you look at my maturity and uh, you measure it to the maturity of Christ, it doesn't measure up, but then there is because of the age, because of the age number, there is that pressure. You need to get married. You need to get married. But so, how do we describe maturity on matters concerning getting married and uh, being in salvation and all that? Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. We'll 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 we'll, we'll uh, I have already added it to the next topic, so you can see. Okay. It is a very important one indeed. Very sure. some, Thank some, you. some women do some women do complain that their husbands are immature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank that, you. That, is, that, that is a serious if somebody tells me that okay, we are born again, but that's a serious abuse, really. Anyway, yeah. we are born again. <laughs> serious <laughs> immature husband. <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds it sounds like an insult, but then unfortunately, if the guy is not mature or the lady is not mature, you see that there is a big problem there. So, yes. how does uh, before somebody jumps into marriage, before somebody jumps to the other side, how do you attain <laughs> that maturity? What is the description of maturity? Amen, indeed. It's so funny yes. hearing someone else talk about it. Yeah, so funny. Husband not mature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we have all seen a lot of things, eh? Yeah, indeed. Do you want to say something, Sister Marjorie, in closing down and giving one person the last, uh, one more person the last word? Just a thank you to everyone who has uh, contributed, Amen. everyone who has joined. Amen. Ever since I joined these fellowships, I'm really learning so much from everyone. So thanks to everyone for your contributions. Hallelujah. And I hope to see you all next time and hear Amen. from you again. Indeed. Amen. As a rule, everybody must always ask questions. You are encouraged to ask questions, contribute. If you're not asking questions, then uh, probably you're not learning. Yeah. Mm. I was going to wait for, you're going to be evicted. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not going to evict anybody unless they, they, they are troublemakers. <laughs> yes, no, no eviction. But, <laughs> yes, you want to say your final words, Pastor Kathy? Well, today has been very insightful mm -hmm. um, in regards to property and marriage. I think it's a very deep topic. Um, yes. You really have to ha get your bearings on what you expect mm -hmm. so that you don't get disappointed when, you know, you get into marriage and it's like, okay, so we have to change the title deeds. And you're like, ah, wait a second. I mm -hmm. did not sign up for this. <laughs> That's it. So it is so important. So good. Amen. I bless the Lord for the insightful topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we really exhausted the, was it the apologies? No, but we haven't. I guess we can always include it in any other because it's something that will always be in when you begin and when you end, especially in the conflict resolution. Have we discussed mm -hmm. conflict resolution? Not yet. Yeah, I think that's another topic that maybe you can add, but maybe not for next no, time. No, 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 no. Just add to the list. That definitely. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. 
Yeah, so very, thank you very much, Senior Bishop, and looking forward to next time. Amen. And at least for Dublin or for Ireland, our lockdown has been lifted. So I am super excited. <laughs> Wonderful. Please. Uh, Pardon. You, you have not heard, please. Pardon. Maybe there are some cakes there. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying our lockdown has been lifted. So at least I can go past five kilometers. Wonderful. <laughs> please come over this side. Hey, us. you guys are still here. having an extra month of lockdown. Yeah, you can come over here. <laughs> With your extra, extra, and then I'll have to quarantine for 14 days. No, you won't quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> you won't uh, quarantine. Great. So it's always good to discuss blessed people. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, we had differences of opinion earlier there. It's always good to uh, discuss and have difference of opinion and uh, understand one another. Amen. So it's not wrong to disagree. Um, that's how we learn. Yeah. That's how Amen. we learn. Yes. Thank you for all your contributions. And uh, let me pray for us here. No, I'm going to ask Sister Marjorie to pray for us. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, we thank you for today's topic. We thank you for everything mm -hmm. discussed. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to have a fellowship like this because we know not everyone has such a chance. We thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for everyone who has contributed and what they have said. And we pray that we will put them into action when such a time comes or for those of us here who are married, that they will put this into their marriages. We pray for our brothers and sisters out there that may need this information but don't have access to this fellowship yet. Mm. We pray that you will create an avenue for them to join us and learn more. We also pray that you'll open our minds to learn and open our minds to ask questions and to understand and to give our leaders the wisdom to be able to answer those questions. We pray that the enemy will flee from our midst, all uh, spirits of confusion and disagreements we pray, Lord, that your spirit will direct us and we pray that your guidance and wisdom and favor shall follow us and above all, your protection, especially in times like this. I pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Marjorie. Thank you, everybody. Ne ne Amen. Next, next Amen. time, keep People should put their videos on so that now you get to know them from the country. <laughs> Start, starting with Pastor oh. Silas. Yeah, starting. <laughs> we did that at the beginning already. <laughs> yes, yeah, Bishop, I will. I'll try. <laughs>